Kinda Funny is doing an old school Patreon pledge drive all August long. If you like the content we've made in 2023, we'd like you to consider supporting us on patreon.com slash kinda funny for the month. Just $10 would get you more than 300 exclusive episodes of shows like Kinda Feudy, Greg Way, and more. We couldn't do this without you, so thank you for your support. What's up, everybody? Welcome! Usually Barrett does the smoke there. <laughs> yeah, but now Barrett does this in the control room. He just does his hands up. There, there it is. is! To Kind of Funny Games Daily for Tuesday, August 1st. Jesus. Blessing, it is August. Can you believe this? It begins. I'm one of your hosts, Greg Gaming Miller. Season. <laughs> alongside Review Poppy. Blessing, Addy Oye Jr. Where's Stellar Blade? <laughs> Where is Stellar Blade? It was, it's supposed to come out 2023. You know what I was thinking about? Like, that? and this is like, it's not, it's just, this is the year you're in, right? Yesterday on whatever show, me, oh, this show, me and Tim were talking about games. I looked at, of course, kindoffunny.com slash calendar. Took me right there to the Blessing Super Fun Gaming List. You're welcome. My number one source for gaming dates. Of course. And we're reading through, dude, this morning I woke up, a br- I was actually just brushing my teeth. So I guess I was drinking my coffee and I was like, fucking Immortals. Immortals oh, yeah. is still coming out somewhere in here. Yeah. They got pushed it's to coming this out, month, right? This mo- It's coming out mid this month. Mid and then this month. Right Ooh-wee. before the show, I was watching a trailer for this game, Atlas Fallen, that I had been a little bit excited about like earlier on when it first got announced and then was just reminded that it's out in like eight days, in like a week. Yeah. This game comes out. Yeah. And it's an incredible looking action game. I forgot that this game was coming out this month on top of Baldur's Gate 3 and Armored Core 6. Venba just came out, but that's short. That's nice. There's just a new, there's new dates for Bomb Rush Cyberfunk. There's new that DLC comes out for August. Ghostbusters right now. Uh, Trend just came out today. Oh yeah, Dreams. Trend. How, how are we? How are we gonna do it? Do we? Do we? Do we divide and conquer? Do we just? I think you gotta go. You gotta go. Like this is where, especially this section of games, right? Mm-hmm. I feel like this is the fun part and where we really get to be ourselves and kind of funny, right? Where it's not all right. You're assigned this review. I'm assigned that review. Da 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 da. Mm-hmm. I feel like we're at an interesting point right now in terms of, you know, since there are no offense to any of the games we just talked about, the big title isn't here, right? Yeah, like, none of them are Starfield. Yeah, exactly, right? Which is, for all, us and our audience is an all hands on deck situation. So this is a jump in. Am I going to like Baldur's Gate 3? You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. they say the right things, but I didn't love Divinity. It just wasn't my type of game. Not to mention I'm not the orcs and elves kind of person. Yeah. Like, so I jump in. I'm, I'm going to try that. See what that's all about. This trend business, obviously I want to play with Ben. So I'm going to try that. Like, I feel like this is the sampling platter. Sometimes when Jen and I eat super bad, like, you know what I mean? Like burgers and pizzas and whatever. Then we're like, we got to stop and we'll just do what we call a grazing dinner Mm -hmm. where Jen does a whole bunch of veggies and fruits and like there's some nice dips and what like breads and pitas. Like, it's not like a meal. Like, oh, I'm getting a burger. I'm getting a steak. Girl dinner. Yeah, it is. (laughs) TikTok. Yeah, I watch TikTok. But it's like this, you know, go through. Like, that's where we're at. We're going to graze. And whatever we like, maybe you stop and that's what you get on. It's a smorgasbord of games right now. I'm, I, I just opened up Blessing Super Fun Game Release Calendar for 2023. Kind of slash calendar. And like, I, for, I literally forgot to see if Stars is out this month too. That's at the end of, of August. And then I have a date here for Goodbye Volcano High. Yeah. Do you know that's apparently coming out this yeah. month? <laughs> yeah. No, I'm aware. I'm aware. It's an exciting time. And like, Goodbye Volcano High at this point, And this is no offense to the developers. Yeah. You take your time. Get your game done. I'll believe when I see when Fair that's enough. actually there, then I'll believe it. This game has been like a PlayStation 5 it was supposed to be a launch game. But like it? to your point of like the grazing dinner, I feel like this is grazing appetizers. Stray God. Where you look straight God. Yeah, that's com- that comes out <laughs> like there's so, two days. There are so <laughs> many games that I'm like, oh yeah, I'm interested in that, but I'm like committed for X amount of hours to it. You know and I mean? then like I yeah, th- these are the appetizers, whereas September feels like all right, this Wrestle is, Quest. This is your first course. Is that this month? Yeah, that's next week, Wrestle Quest. Jesus. Uh yeah, maybe this is a main course. But yeah, like, I mean, September and October are only getting crazier, too. And so it's, an, it's a very exciting time to be a gamer. It's a very exciting time to be a gamer, ladies and gentlemen. Especially because my pat upon dream is officially becoming a reality. Baldur's Gate 3 is taking on Xbox and so much more because this is Kind of Funny Games Daily. Each and every weekday on a variety of platforms, we run you through the nerdy video game news you need to know about. If you like that, be part of the show. You can write in for free at patreon.com. Nope, that's right. Kindoffunny.com slash KFGD with your thoughts, concerns, questions, and comments about the day's news. Also, give us your squad up requests. Then you can watch us record the show live for free on twitch.tv 
slash kind of funny games and youtube.com slash kind of funny games. If you're watching live, you have a special job. Go to kind of funny.com slash you're wrong and tell us what we screw up as we screw it up so we can set the record straight for everybody watching later on youtube.com slash kind of funny games and listening on podcast services around the globe. Of course. If you like what we do here at Kind of Funny, we couldn't do it without you. Maybe you want to go that extra mile over at patreon.com slash kind of funny. You can get each and every episode of Kind of Funny Games Daily ad free. You can watch us record the other podcasts live as we record them a day early before anybody else. You can get more than 300 exclusive episodes of content we've put up since we launched the spare bedroom in October. And now, ladies and gentlemen, you can get what I think is arguably the greatest premium tier item of all time i'm jumping into housekeeping third bullet point barrett we now have a brand new shirt up from the one the only olive party we the trogs this is a patreon.com slash kind of funny shirt premium tier item it's one that we every year every month you get a piece of physical goods this is it if you don't get it it's cool that you don't get it Mm. the real ones get it you know what I mean? The real ones. The real ones. We the ones, the real ones get this one. I didn't get it until you explained it to me. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, you know, see, it's, but it's interesting because I feel like the Trogs bit is the Patreon chat bit. Yeah. And it's like mainly a kind of funny podcast tr- chat bit. I mean, the Trogs thing I understood. Oh. It was more so. Oh, like, you can get the wrestling it was, part. Of yeah, the, like the other half of like, It's everything it I love. Trogs and wrestling exactly. combined into one thing. And uh, the hot t-shirt regardless if you get her or not. Of course, yeah. This is a good looking shirt. I like that one a lot. I'm going to be wearing a lot of those. Uh, of course, ladies and gentlemen, remember uh, you should use our Epic Creator Code kind of funny when you're checking out on the Epic Game Store or playing something like Fortnite, Rocket League, etc. on your PlayStation, Xbox, or Switch. Remember, even if you're picking up those free Epic games and you use the code, it helps us out. Housekeeping for you. A brand new kind of funny podcast is up right now about our 2023 bucket list you can go to youtube.com slash kind of funny to hear Andy wants to play Adam Sandler in basketball. And I need someone to explain how to cut my fingernails and toenails. I, ooh, I have questions about both those things. Sure. He wants to do that by the end of 2023. No, no, no. It's just like, this is our updated bucket list. Oh, okay. okay, okay this okay, is okay, still okay, before okay, he dies. Not before the year ends. And you don't know how to cut your fingernails. And I toenails? do, but like, I don't know how to stop the ping, ping, ping from them shooting all over. And I don't, mm. I refuse to, I refuse to believe that this happens to everybody. Cause somebody would have solved this by now. Like I, you're shooting them off like a, like a fucking what? Not on purpose. Not on purpose, but mm. it, it, I mean, it's happening. Yeah. I, I get that. Maybe like, one out of ten nails. I guess that's yeah, all I guess the nails. Super strong nails you know? <laughs> <laughs> but when I'm cutting my nails, it's happening only once that it's like shooting off. Yeah. The other nine, I'm just like, oh, it happens a lot to me. Right into the trash can. Yeah. No. no. Interesting. You know, it's your ca- maybe you have the strong. You're a trash nails. can guy. Uh, yeah. Because I'm a sink guy. Tim's a sink guy. You're cutting your nails into the sink. <laughs> well, well, hold on. Mm-hmm. And then you take a piece of toilet paper, you wipe up all the nail. Why does not get a trash can? Because I, then I got to hunch over the trash can or whatever and be no, weird. Just like get a trash. Put Nick it on used top to do it, it over the toilet, and then he dropped the, the nail clippers in the. To- it's a great episode. Wait, go inside listen. of the go, toilet? Go, go, go off the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> He's flushing the toilet. The nails? Yeah. In, including his toenails. Wait, how does that even work? <laughs> He's putting his foot up on the bowl. And then, I, is he sitting on the bowl? As no, it's happening? I, I think he's. I, I mean, I didn't get that far into it. I don't think he's here yet. Yeah. Because I'm okay. See, I, wasted <laughs> bandwidth. I do it over the. Or no, I'm sorry, Louise nine thousand. I do it over the toilet and flush. Well, I step on the bowl, says Coy- Coyote. Is it not just easier to this grab? This is back to like we the whole how do you wipe thing, and every, everybody else can't believe the other person does it the other way. Every time I, I brush my teeth and I put, put on the hot water, it still blows my mind that like most people don't do it that way. I do way. it that way. Come on now, yeah, hot water boys. Of course, you got to b- b- burn the germs exactly, that are on the yeah, toothbrush already. Burn them. <laughs> you can burn them germs off. Other people, oh, there's more water. There's more bacteria in the hot water. Shut up. Ew, no. Shut up. No, because we wash our dishes with hot water too because it burns the germs. It's not a myth. <laughs> it's not a myth. It's fact. I'm with you. I'll tell you what else isn't a myth. The fact that Zelda in review part two is premiering today at 2 p.m. right here on YouTube.com slash kind of funny games. The one, the only, the boss baby, Barrett Courtney, is returning to the series that made him a star. <laughs> 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 Zelda in review. Uh, Barrett, what are you doing today? Uh, yeah, 2 p.m. Uh, Pacific over on YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny Games. Uh, Zelda in Review Part 2 uh, will be premiering, uh, so you can hang out in the in the chat as the video uh, goes up. And it I will be reviewing and ranking the Minish Cap, 
Oracle of Ages and Seasons and Tears of the Kingdom to oh. add onto my list uh, that I made back in 2020 for Zelda in Review Part 1. So those games will be reviewed and ranked, and we'll talk about all the spoilers and all that good stuff. So if you've been waiting for at least some sort of spoiler talk when it comes to Tears of the Kingdom, uh, for now, this is your one-stop shop for it. Barrett, blink twice if Tears of the Kingdom is your new number one. On, on. He won't show his face. Oh, there it is. Oh, wow. Oh, there it is. Well, he's not blinking. He's not oh, blinking. Wow. He oh, wa he wow. wants you to watch it. Number two, huh? That's crazy. Man, Barrett, you look wow. great in that light. I mean, you look good all the time. Don't get me wrong. But I'm saying, like, right there. Yeah, that face. That's the I, one. You spread out. <laughs> look at how young you look. All your wrinkles yeah. are spread out. I, well, yeah. Like, I did a full shave, which is, like, honestly pretty rare. I yeah. usually just do, like, the, the buzz and, like, get the I was going to say, you look clean belt. today. Yeah, he Thank does you. look clean. Yeah. 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 Thank yeah, I gotta clean all this up before SummerSlam. Got a haircut tonight. Yeah, you yeah, look man. awful. I do. Terrible. I was gonna say this, you know, like in the, the we had a pre-roll ad here, and it's like, I'm a good looking ugly guy. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like, I'm not like don't get me wrong, I'm not gonna stop and turn heads on the street, but like, I'm like, yeah, damn. You might. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're a polite <laughs> gentleman. You're a polite gentleman. Thank you to our Patreon producers, <laughs> Jedi Master Deadpool, Delaney Twining, <laughs> Logan Delaney. You have to laugh this hard at it. You have to laugh this hard at it. <laughs> Uh, uh, Logan Delaney. Today Listen, we're you can grow a good beard, and you're tall, and like you, you're a good looking man. Good I can't grow a beard. I gotta get rid of this hair. It's like my greatest flaw. Is it my beard? Yeah. Do, I do, just do you don't have bigger flaws? <laughs> no, I, I I I can't identify a, a blessing flaw off the top of my head. Mm. You know what I mean? But because what again? It's just annoying. And I, I I like I like pumping you up. I like being your hype man. Mm. But even this, like you're wearing the PS I Love You sweatshirt. You make it look great. When I wear it, I feel like I just look like a frumpy dad. But look at you. You're ready to go. I appreciate it. No Thank problem. you so much. Style poppy. Uh, oh, today we're brought to you by Honey, BetterHelp, and Shady Rays. But we'll talk about that later. For now, let's begin the show with what is and forever will be the Roper Report. <laughs> Time for some news. Seven items on the Roper Report. A baker's dozen. Well, hold on, I'm reading a you're wrong about the hot water thing. Not a myth. It, what's, it, oh, here, Colin Barry in You're Wrong says, Blessing said we use hot water when washing the dishes to kill the germs. You use hot water because the soap expands in the hot water, i.e. suds. Cold water lets it just wash away. Did you know that? I didn't know that. Wow. Chat confirmed that for me. That's Colin Barry could be in the hair line. Neat. I like that. It, it also neat. kills the germs. Uh, number one. A new game from the Patapon creators funds its Kickstarter in under an hour. Let's fucking go. It's Taylor Lyles over at IGN.com. We already knew that the creator of Patapon was working on a spiritual successor to his 2D indie darling and that a Kickstarter page for the project would go live this week. And today we discovered that the game has already hit its funding goal in under one hour. The Kickstarter went live today with a funding goal of $141,098, which the project successfully reached in just 47 minutes. At the time of reporting, this project has surpassed over $200,000. While the project has hit its funding goal, the campaign is still running until September 1st, so there's still ample time to back the project. Uh, Ratatan, not Petapon. Rataton as an upcoming rhythm and strategy game announced earlier this month at Bit Summit. In addition to the creator working on the project, the musician for the original Patapon is also tied to the project. Blessing. Great. You and Janet did not give a flying fuck about this on PS I Love You, mm -hmm. but boy, are your faces fucking red now. They are. Yeah, my face <laughs> is so red right now. Is this like, is this your greatest dream come true? Are you, are you jazzed for this? Does this get you excited? Is it my greatest dream come true? Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. Of course not. Uh, am I jazzed and excited about this? Yeah, of course. Like, you know, I, 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 this is, I feel like we've gotten to a point with both indie funding, but Kickstarters and go like where we haven't had one in a while. And I shouldn't even say that, I guess maybe I should, let's just say for kind of funny, mm -hmm. we haven't had one in a while that kind of proves why these platforms make so much sense. Mm -hmm. The the behind the scenes information that I am not privy to, but you can read the tea leaves on is that guess what? PlayStation was like, no, we're not making more Patapon. I mean they, you know, got rid of so many people, right? When yeah. they cha they changed up Jap Japan Studios. We're not making more Patapons. They don't sell well enough for us. So, thank you, goodbye. And then the creators get to go, well, we still believe in this game. We still want to make this kind of game and we think there's an audience for this game. And so they asked for this, what I think honestly is a paltry number, right? As we've seen with lots of Kickstarters, you make the funding goal low, 
you crush it. And then also you get to then turn to publishers and be like, yo, we were we'd love to, to expand this. our scope and we've already paid for it. So why not get on board to do the whole thing or whatever? It's now part of the business. That's all great. That is excellent for me who does want another pad upon who would, and not only, not only do I want another pad upon, I want a modern pad upon. That was the fun thing of when they dropped the pad upon one remaster, uh, yeah, remaster, right? Went through platinum and had a great time. They dropped pad upon two. I jumped in and started playing and I was having fun, but then it was like, oh man, like they want me to play a lot of this game to get the platinum to do the thing. And it's like, ah, but I got to keep reviewing it. And, and I moved on and never really did stuff with it. And part of that was, okay, I'm so busy with other things in life. And then the other thing was, well, it's also, you know, this isn't as, I, Patapon 3 actually changed this that I appreciate. Like, mm. to see what they want to do in a 2023 Patapon would make me excited for it. And so, yeah, I, I think this will have a smaller scope. I think it'll be more in line with the Patapon 1. I know it's, you know, 100 monsters on screen multiplayer, so I'm not saying in terms of uh, mechanics, it'll be Patapon 1. I think it'll definitely be Patapon 4. It'll be the sequel to Patapon 3 and the multiplayer they introduced there. But my thought here is that it'll be a smaller scoped Patapon, which I'm all about. Yeah, and that should be. And I'm glad that, again, this was one of the things I said, and you say every time there's a closure or a layoff or whatever, but the idea that, yo, these are talented developers, the people who left Sony Japan, right? And that they can go off and they can make something of their own. They can do it. We've seen it with the Hotshot Golf team, clap yeah. hands, right? Going and making mobile versions and continue to do other things. Like if just because PlayStation doesn't want it or a publisher doesn't want it doesn't mean other people don't do it. So the fact that we live in a time where they are able to go out and do that and not leave the industry, just go to a different project, et cetera, or get, get assigned something they don't want to do. Mm. I'm all for that. So that's what's exciting to me about this. Does, does them being able to hit their funding goal this quickly, right? Hitting that 141,000 in just 40, 47 minutes. Does that tell you there's an audience out there that is down and wants a Rataton slash Patapon game? Because you mentioned it that, you know, there's a reason why PlayStation hasn't made a Patapon in forever, right? There's a reason why uh, PlayStation shifts their resources toward, hey, we don't need a Japan studio anymore because we're doing the, the, these other things. And now, you know, they go off and start making Rataton on their own. You're the only person who I've ever heard talk about Patapon. I've never That's heard any lie. other. I've never Maybe not as passionately. I don't think I've heard the word Patapon come out of anybody else's mouth except for Greg Miller's. Is the only other time I've heard people talk about Patapon is because you talked about yeah. Patapon. Well, clearly there's dozens of us and we have deep pockets. It, so, I mean, that's my, that my question. Though. Yeah. Is there dozens of you? Like, is there enough people, do you think, to show up for this game to make it a success? Well, this is the whole thing. And again, why Kickstarter and these kind of funding platforms matter so much is that, yes, I think there are. Because guess what? To a independent team to this small studio or whatever they, I don't know if they're collective that is making uh Rataton, right? Mm -hmm. Success to them is a far lower number than success PlayStation. to PlayStation. This is what we always talk about with the dollars and cents and the bean counters and whatever of like when Ubisoft, when you get that big, Immortal Phoenix Rising, like, come on, how can that possibly be a success? You know what I mean? For the line items you're going to have at your end of year thing and how you're allocating your budget and how you're doing all these different things. Like it is the, I, I guess, benefit. It is the, uh, yeah, the benefit of independent development, independent anything, right? Like, again, like, you know, look at our numbers on YouTube, right? Like we're not setting the world on fire, but they're a success to an 11 person independent company. Whereas in, like my favorite, we once went along, I mean, this is, I'm dating myself, but I remember when probably 2012, when I went down uh, to my first VidCon to learn about it. And I sat in on a session, uh, Bernie Burns was doing talking about rooster teeth at the time. And he mentioned, uh, it was right after they had funded a uh, laser team mm -hmm. and they had made whatever, a ridiculous amount of money they did to actually make a movie and he was talking about the power of community and the power of numbers and this is before patreon this is before kind of funny right he was this is where i get the idea for kind of funny honestly um he's talking about like you know look at this though and, and he was showing the in the, in the amount of times the trailer had been watched or whatever to some out, uh, obscene million right but then he's like the most important number on this page is this and it was the amount of backers they had and I want to say it was, and I'm totally out my ass, maybe 50,000, maybe it was 5,000. It was something like that. But mm. they made so much money, it must have been 50,000. And he's like, you need to understand that if we put up a video on Rooster Teeth and it got 50,000 views, we would take it down because we thought something was wrong, mm -hmm. right? So like uh, my, our numbers are nothing, but the, that number matters. And like, it, it's all in the eye of the beholder and what your business model and da 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 is. So yeah, like I think the numbers are so much lower for what this needs to be a success. I hope they can find a publisher. Uh, that comes through and is like, cool, we'll give you more money to make it a little bit bigger or help you with PR or help you with marketing or whatever the hell it's going to be mm. and do that. But even then they have to come in with the understanding of, okay, what are we actually getting and how are we actually going to promote this? Cause again, to your point, Patapon isn't the craziest one. I, you know, it's the, them and local Roco. 
I feel yeah. they usually are fighting out for what the beloved PSP music based game was. And so that is an old, that's an old argument. Most people probably watching this show weren't even playing games when the PSP was out, like in its heyday or whatever. So it's like, what do they do with that information? How much of a success can that be? Can you make a big impact on it? I look at it and I mean, the trailer for me looks great. I don't see that setting the world on fire. I mm. don't see that being like fantasy critic. We got to draft Ratatatan. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I hope it will be. I'm going to play it for sure. I'm going to be all about it. But yeah, I think it's going to be a very specific game that maybe can get an audience, but we'll see. What is the the one element you think that would push this, push this thing beyond? Like whether it is a feature to modernize it based on what Patapon has been or like the right publisher. Like, is there the right, I guess, you know, spark for this thing to come out and be a, even like a moderate success for what the size of this thing is. Yeah. I want to get the, the bit summit thing they did. Right. Yeah. Here it was. I'm going to read from IGN. I know, uh, blah, blah, VGC. There it is. There it is there, but they call it out. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, the three, this is the quote from, uh, one of the creators. Uh, the three main game concepts are over 100 cute characters fighting it on a screen, four player simultaneous battles and more adventure and roguelike elements than Pat upon had. What, I mean, that's a base level of what it's going to be, right? And who knows what it is. I think what could set it apart is if they can nail multiplayer and roguelike. Because again, Patapon 3 went for, you know, if you're not a Patapon fan, like, you know, you are God. You bang your drums to make the Patapons do what you want in battle as they go through and do all these different things. Patapon 3 gave, you know, the one hero Patapon that you could then take into multiplayer and stuff do. I know, I don't know the exact way I would finesse the story. I want to get away from the God thing. I want it to be, you have one character that can lead your people and you can take that one character out and play with other people. And then for this 100 people on screen, that's not something we saw before in other Patapons, right? So to see if it's going to be these big battles or whatever, maybe I'm bringing in all my troops, you're bringing in all your troops. I guess we each have 25, you know what I mean? It is that cool thing. That could be fun. Those battles could be neat. Part of the Patapon appeal, I always thought, was the portability of it, which of course you're going to lose. I would assume they have not announced platforms for this thing, what they're doing, right? Like, maybe it could be mobile, maybe it could be whatever, but even then, now we're talking about latency, headphones, yada, yada, yada. Like, there's a bunch of stuff that I don't understand fully how you do it in 2023, and I'm excited to see if they have answers for it. But for sure, the roguelike elements, I think, could be cool. We have seen that, right? People do like, I'm just going to do a quick run. I'm just going to do this thing. And that Patapon was always that. It was a lot of grinding, right? Go back, play through the thing, kill the beast, get a drop, come back, improve your pad upon, improve your, your army, you know, make your next spear guy or your next bow and arrow guy or whatever it's going to be. Magic wielding guy. Yeah. Cool. You going to play it? No, <laughs> not at all. You're so close minded. You know what I mean? I'm going to do I just it for know, you, Greg. I, I, Thank I, you very much, Barrett, for being open minded, playing other yeah. games. If it's he, not soccer, a fighting game, <laughs> or some woman's got to get naked to get inside and control Whoa. a mech. Hey, Am I, am I lying You're or not not lying? If we can figure out how to put all those into one game, oh, that's a that's fucking... Bad, that's that's what's that's what's <laughs> <laughs> no, but similar to, uh, what was it? Uh, what's the game that Lakers had is really into? Pikmin. We had Tinykin, which was like yeah. like an alternate version of Pikmin that I really enjoyed. And I know that uh, Ratatan is the same creators as Patapon, but if there's like some more modern like uh, design elements and stuff, I could see myself getting really into it. So I'll do it for you, Greggy. Uh, did we answer this question? It was on here. We just talked forever, which was great, and I love that. Uh, this question is more focused on Kickstarter. Oh, okay. Do you want to do it or do you want to move? We can do it. Let's do it. Uh, Sia, Sia. Sisa, Sisa. Sisa, Sisa. Has, hey, guys. With the news that Ratatatan was funded in Kickstarter in less than an hour, in the time of this writing, the email has already raised uh, 2.5 times the requested amount. I have two questions. Greg, did you put your money where your mouth is and support on Kickstarter? I'll tell you right now. And no, I did not. Oh, you didn't? <laughs> no. That surprised me a little Dude, bit. I'll tell you what. Mm-hmm. Uh, everything they said about having a kid, that was accurate. Mm-hmm. I'm way more like, listen, I'm not going to spend money unless I got to spend money kind of thing. And mm-hmm. so I looked at it last night and I found it honestly confusing as to what I was getting. Was getting and also then I have so many Kickstarters that I'm still getting emails about for things that didn't come. I'm like, I just don't care this much. You know what I mean? Like I will buy the game gladly when it comes out and do that thing. Mm-hmm. And there clearly it's been proven that it's fine. It doesn't need me in there. But it was, I jumped in there, I'm like, I don't, I don't want a soundtrack. I don't want a thing. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like that's See, I would have thought, and maybe this is a Greg Miller that's once, once upon a time, maybe this is also a conflict of interest. I would have thought that Greg Miller would have been the face of this Kickstarter. Like, step forward. I am going to be the highest backer. I am going to, like, 
be the sponsor of I mean, Raditon. Single Greg Miller might have probably done that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now when I'm like, oh, I got bills to pay and Ben always needs something and yada, yada, yada. My, my goal. Now you're a responsible human being. My, yeah. Well, yeah. My goal at any point in time is to not spend money mm -hmm. on myself. Ben needs something. Let's do it. You know what I mean? Whatever. I'm, I'm all about that. Don't get me wrong. Jen needs something. Sure. Whatever. But for me, I'm like, ah. Mm -hmm. This Portillo shirt can go on longer. I don't need to buy new t-shirts. I'm fine. You know what I mean? I'm whatever, blah, blah, blah. And so it was just like, eh. I saw it and I'm just like, eh. There's so many Kickstarter games I've done that I haven't even gotten the rewards for, that I haven't done the thing for. I, I've been... I don't, let's open my Kickstarter to see what I funded. Because it's when not... Was the last, are, you, are you talking about Kickstarters from like five years ago? Or is this more recent? Or is this like non-video game stuff? God, it's at $431,000 right now. This Rattaton thing? Yeah. Jesus. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, no, I've done more recent stuff. Let's see what I, so the last thing I backed and I don't regret this, even uh -huh. though I don't even, I have no information on it. Uh, Mega Ran's children album. Mega Ran oh, put up his okay. kids album. I did that. Okay. I can understand how, yeah, that'd make a lot of sense for you. Oh man, look, I'm a man. I'm a Mega Ran super fan. So I did that. Then I did, uh, Citra, uh, Atra, which is a video game horror movie. My friend's making uh -huh. a former, uh, IG owner, Levi Buchanan. Then I did Live 95, Mega, Man, Mega Ran's new album. Oh. <laughs> so basically, I'm just funding Mega Ran. Uh, then this game, is this thing, Sacrifier? Yeah, a modern JRPG uh, with a unique battle system. I don't even remember why I did like this. Greg Miller. Yeah, but I want it, it seemed cool. Yeah, but there's no game out yet. It's just the thing. I have all these things. And like, I did that. Why did I do You know, Not that I shouldn't do it, but like joking hazard uh, nights and bikes from a long time ago pink hearts oh, a comic book yeah, yeah 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 stage of development indie city is this sacrifier yes yeah this looks really cool it looks dope right okay now i understand yeah yeah now i get it especially because you're into like octopath and stuff yeah 100 percent. but it gets in that thing where it's like i don't need to i think i probably did sacrifier because it looks great and they needed help and they want to make their thing right yeah retatatan didn't need my help you know i'm gonna go where my help's needed Okay. And so I look at this and it's just like, yeah, I don't know. And again, like, what am I doing? Like, you know, what, what are you going to get back for this thing? Yeah, I don't even, I mean, maybe, maybe I'll sell myself on it. Now. Hold on. But again, like I look through this, I'm like, where the hell are even the God dang rewards? You know, what the heck is going on? Well, right, I'll click back the project. What happens then? Come here. I right, can see I can get the digital access. I'm good. Beta access. I don't want that. A yeah. discord roll. Come on. If, if. <laughs> If I never had to sign up for another goddamn Discord for anything, I'd be happy. Physical edition? No, I don't need that. Yeah, I feel like patreon.com slash kind of funny games makes it very clear what you're getting. Gosh, you're telling me? Beauty. Yeah, right? 300 <laughs> bonus episodes. Podcast. But again, like, so like, that's a serious thing. And I don't ever want it to be like, I know people are giving me shit in the chat of like fake fan and then like not putting my money where my mouth is or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, I will gladly give them the money when the game is done. Yeah. I've just been burned by Kickstarter projects. I listed a bunch of good ones in there. Mega Ran. Mega Ran, you can have my money anytime. Don't worry about it. The same thing with Levi when you're doing cool shit. But it's like, I just, I don't, I, I just don't, I'm not so worried about getting the digital edition. I will get the digital edition when it comes. I will buy it. Yeah. I will pay for it. I mean, that's to the last part of Cease's Cease's question here, where they say, and for both of you, with the game being funded as quick as it was, do you think uh, Kickstarter may once again become a viable and more used option for indie studios, getting funding or at least part of it to make their games? I've not kept up with what the trajectory of Kickstarter has been with indie games. I feel, I feel like just anecdotally, it seems to have slowed down a lot because I remember Mighty Number no. 9 being a Kickstarter thing and that, you know, blowing up. And then also... Um, the Castlevania Bloodstained, Bloodstained Ritual of the Night and Curse yeah. of the Moon becoming big on Kickstarter. But I feel like since then, things have slowed down and maybe it was, I know Mighty Number no. 9 wasn't received as well as people probably wanted it to. And Bloodstained, I think, was pretty good. But um, it seems like that's become less and less of a thing, at least on the video game side. I assume people are still using it for maybe tabletop and other things um, still pretty consistently. But I wonder if the easier or better option for video games is like looking to publishers and looking to other means as opposed to kickstarter because kickstarter just seems like a big commitment especially when you now have this audience that you are beholden to for something that you're making that is as complicated as a video game and now you're adding on top of it rewards and incentives and all these things to now now you're not just making a video game which is already very difficult but now you're doing all these things on top of it and like maybe you might have merch and all these other things but like if the game's not as successful as you want it to be you still got to fulfill these other things now you're just trapped and locked into this into this thing this is just me and this is just me speculating because I also think about Shovel Knight also and how Shovel Knight was a success, right? But like that studio, Yacht Club, it felt like they were making Shovel Knight content 
forever forever yeah and how much of that was just them being locked into um fulfilling things off of kickstarter who knows yeah and so and i think you know again i said earlier a use case and you know you brought up the patreon content which i think is a bit more apples to apples than the patapons or red oops, sorry Rataton. Rataton. Rataton content, right? Because what do I want? I want the fucking game. So to start, the, the cheapest pledge I can do to get a reward here, right, is 48 bucks American, which is the digital version of the game, beta access, and then the Discord rule. Mm-hmm. I do not want to be in the beta. I do not want to be a backer. I, or I, I, yeah, a Discord thing. And then I want a digital edition of the game, but are, I'm not. Yeah. I mean, based on my knowledge of Patapon, r- Rattata better not cost 50 bucks. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you better be blowing this thing out of the fucking water if that's the case. And I don't think that's the way they're going. And so then as you just count up, it's just into stuff like the first thing I'd be somewhat interested in is a t-shirt. They show the t-shirt and it's like, oh, it's on a white shirt. I'm never going to wear a white shirt. You know what I mean? Like you got to, you got to put your money where you want it to go. You get up here finally where it's like you can design an enemy for $2,500. Oh. I'm, I'm good. And again, it also comes with the soundtrack on vinyl and a CD and an art book and all this shit that I don't want. Yeah. I don't want more shit on my bookshelves in my life. I don't even have a CD player. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah. No, that makes sense. Do you have a CD drive anywhere? No. Uh, yeah. No, I don't. I mean, do we count my PlayStation 5? <laughs> I was thinking, uh, you know, God bless him. Corey Cutney, Cutney sent uh, those gifts, to sell, or the, the, C, the CDs with all mm. the gifts on them. We all got them. Like, this is amazing. Oh. Does anybody have a CD drive on any of their computers? I, I digress. I have a record general. player that's also a CD player and a cassette pl- uh, player. And it does Bluetooth. Wait, what I the fuck? <laughs> you yeah. just link me to this cassette. Can it make an player? egg McMuffin? Uh, maybe. I, I, I <laughs> need to toaster? check. I didn't know it did Bluetooth until Alyssa discovered it like two weeks ago. So I guess I do have a CD player in my car, but like that's not going to play Corey Gutney's gifts. No, <laughs> so. no, it won't. Uh, number two on the Roper Report. Baldur's Gate 3 won't come to Xbox before 2024, Larian suggests. This is Jordan Miller at VGC. The upcoming RPG Baldur's Gate 3 may not release on Xbox until 2024, it's been suggested. Writing on Twitter, Larian's director of publishing, Michael Douse, seems or seemed to imply that the issues relating to launching the game on Microsoft's platform may not be resolved until next year. Quote, we have quite a few engineers working very hard to do what no other RPG of this scale has achieved. Seamless drop-in, drop-out co-op on Series S, Douse wrote. We hope to have a, uh, an update by the end of the year, end quote. In June, speaking to IGN, founder and creative director uh, Sven Vicky uh, was asked uh, why the game is coming to PC in August and PS5 in September, but still doesn't have a date on the Xbox Series S slash S version. According to I've been talking, Vinky, uh, the, issues, uh, the issue lies with a Microsoft policy that requires games to have the same gameplay features on both Xbox Series X and Xbox Series S. While Series S games often have a lower resolution, frame rate, or level of detail, this is considered acceptable by Microsoft given that it's less powerful than the Series X. What isn't considered acceptable, however, is the removal of modes or other features. We then have a tweet section here from Very AFK, who's a Larian person. Do you know who this is? Oh, I think that was Vinky. Let me double check. Okay, so this is just a direct quote then? Yeah. It's just yeah, summarizing yeah, yeah, yeah. what we had. Okay. Uh, the issue then, as confirmed by the studio in February, is that the split screen co op mode runs perfectly well on Xbox Series X, but is struggling to run at an acceptable level on Xbox Series S. The team report is reportedly hesitant to remove split screen co op altogether, parentheses, thereby making the Series X version less feature rich than the PS5 one. But Microsoft policy also means it can't just remove it from the Series S version and keep it in the Series X version. Explaining the complexity of the co-op mode, uh, Vinky uh, explained, quote, you're very free in what you do, more free than people expect. That means you can run into a really big city that's much more dense than people expect. Uh, he also conceded uh, that the ultimately, he also conceded that there ultimately may have to be some compromises made to the release of the Xbox version, but chose not to go into further detail. There's a lot, I think, to get into here, right? Because... The conversation about the Series X, right, and the Series S, and where we're at with, with current gen on the Xbox side has always been, oh, man, S is such a great addition to the platform, which, like, I think holistically, I, I believe, 100%. because it's a cheaper way to get in. It's a cheaper way to get in and play, you know, new gen, current gen games. 
um, it's an option for people who can't afford an Xbox Series X or who can't afford a PS5 or whatever. Do you mind if I stop real quick? Yeah, go for it. In the YouTube chat, Dice says, terrible policy. I'm glad I switched to PC and left consoles behind. Someone banned Dice. All right. There you go. Not every console's like this. Not all consoles. <laughs> not all. <laughs> all right. Christ. I'm not going to sit here and have you put this feather on the PlayStation. Right? Yeah. I'm surprised that we're half we're halfway through this console generation right i guess maybe approaching halfway through the generation sure we're a few years in yeah and we're ar already at a place where developers are like yeah we're being held back by this series s because i've seen I've, i mean i've seen this now from larian but i believe it was like some other game too i've, I've seen online recently that was complaining about the series s now that was kind of hampering them um in their things that's it's difficult right because like the i understand it from both sides i understand it from the xbox side of hey in order to get this right in order to do this there has to be parity on features yeah you have to have split screen on both xbox series s and xbox series x these have to be the same game otherwise this the series s and series x aren't do are that they're not living up to what we're selling it as um but on the other side yeah like if you have to make your game to these specifications and you're like the lowest you can make it to is the xbox series s then you're just trapped to like whatever the xbox series s is putting out for even for sure. higher um like higher specified machines and again that's a problem on, on, on both sides i don't know what happens here like i wonder if a few year a few more years in microsoft is like all right we're cutting off the series s for from these specifications that would be my prediction is that eventually yeah you get them to get free of that and i would think possibly the solution then becomes the game streaming stuff if, if we have xcloud to where they want it right mm -hmm. all right well it won't run the way you want it but we've got xcloud at this point and we've got the addition of all the games or your library you're able to do this or you know some solution there where you're pulling it from the cloud onto your series s if it isn't able to run that but i think it's to your point of getting deeper into it right where eventually you have to let go of that if this is a real issue because mm -hmm. it is i have seen the occasional thing about it but what this is, you know, a developer on the record actually calling it out. And there was, I forget who it was, but I know what you're talking about. There was one recently. Yeah. But then before that, there was so much scuttlebutt, hullabaloo, people just saying this was going to be a problem. I think before it might have actually been a problem. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of hard to separate the wheat from the chaff on that one of like, wait a second, was this a real issue or are we there now? Or is this just yeah. very specifically it, to what Larian's doing? It's an issue. And I think like as, uh, from what I can tell, it's only appeared in these specific cases of yeah, Larian and maybe one or two other games calling this out as a thing. Yeah. But it still makes me think that. I mean, Oh, the, sure, it's a real issue. I mean, well, it's a thing that will become a problem in the future. The, the because further we are, get and the, far, the, far the, you more, the more yeah, you push. Games yeah. are only going to get more advanced. Games are only going to get more complex. Games are only going to, you know, be more, get more features and try to, you know, do more um, innovative things with technology. And yeah, once we get into, let's say, year five or six of the Xbox Series X and PS5 generation, and you have more and more people coming up coming up and being like, hey, the Series S is holding us back. Like, it's either we don't come out on Xbox or we only, like, we only live, have these features on Xbox Series X. I would think that Microsoft has to make a decision then. And you would imagine at some point, right, you're going to get to, and we've talked about this on PS, I love you for PlayStation, and maybe the timetables aren't the same and don't work out, mm. blah, blah, blah. But if you redesign the Series X to be a smaller profile, do you then have also a Series whatever Pro model that then now the Series X is smaller and cheaper, so it takes yeah. the S's slot, the X falls like away. A, a library, or not a library, but like a console slate refresh, basically. Yeah, yeah. yeah where yeah, it yeah. is. And We're not even selling the S anymore, so now you don't have to worry. Because then we get into, for on the Xbox side, generations, we're kind of throwing that out the window. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. We are doing these incremental updates. As we go, we are phasing out boxes and we're phasing in new boxes that aren't hey we're jumping we're making a big jump from series x to the xbox 720 or whatever the new thing is yeah, called. Yeah, yeah. but it is now xbox series z is phasing in and xbox series s is phasing out now you're looking at the x and z as the new s yeah exactly <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah you're you're cheaper entry to it yeah yeah, yeah. but that's wild like i mean uh, that's and also it's unfortunate for xbox folks who want to be able to play Baldur's gate on their console because like again we're talking about uh probably what's going to be one of the biggest rpgs of the year that said also like Baldur's gate is coming out at what soon for pc like in a few days for days, pc august 3rd yeah in a couple okay. days for pc and then it's coming out in september for playstation yeah 
y'all can play in Starfield anyway. You're fine. <laughs> it's that weird thing where the Baldur's Gate audience is so ride or die Baldur's Gate. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where it was like I, uh, uh, you know, Jen's sister and her sister's boyfriend were in town, and they are all about Baldur's Gate three, and we were talking about it, and I was like, oh, you know, and I'm like, well, you then need Starfield, and they're like, I have no faith in Starfield. Like yep. there, they were like they drank the Kool Aid. They know Baldur's Gate three is what they want to play, and it's a different kind of RPG, obviously. Mm -hmm. And I'm very much like I look at those two games, and this is not an affront to like the quality. It's just like oh, Starfield is way more the kind of RPG I want to play mm -hmm. of just open world Bethesda, right? Versus this one where it's like okay, it's like turn based and it's like orcs and elves and shit. I'm like all right, that's yeah. that's fine. Again, like that's where I get excited and curious about where we're gonna land at the end of the year for game awards and different sure. um outlets for what's gonna win RPG of the year. Because I feel like for what you're describing, right? Like I think there is more of a hardcore RPG fan base that is all about Baldur's Gate. And I, and don't get me wrong, like I'm I'm probably this is not recency bias, but it's I, I feel at this point, which is odd to say, I know more about moment to moment gameplay in Baldur's Gate 3 thanks to those gi that giant presentation they did and the yeah. character creator than, than I do Starfield, even though we had the great Starfield presentation. And the like, when you start going through the permutations of the character choices you're making in Baldur's Gate 3, and I'm talking about just creating the character, mm -hmm. let alone leveling up and then choose a subclass yeah. and then I choose, her, they give you like a list of shit. And it's like, and I'm like, this shit's way deeper in terms of that than I think Fallout's going to be, which is, yeah, you know, or I'm sorry, Starfield's going to be with skill trees and whatever. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if right now, uh, like, and this is, yeah, if I had to make a bet on what it, what game is more likely to come out and like wow its audience and actually be feature complete and do all that stuff, I would err on the side of Baldur's Gate three just for what we've got. Not to mention they've been in early access for like two that, years. Yeah. Like you know what I mean? Like that. Like I was shocked when I was like, oh man, can you preload it? And it was like, I was like, oh, you can already install. And I was like, oh, it's the early access, right? And I was yeah. like, oh shit, I had early access to Baldur's Gate three. I don't even remember to getting this. <laughs> but speaking of that, Gregway. Number three on the Roper Report, let's keep talking about Baldur's Gate 3 and the fact that it's 122 gigabyte download cannot be preloaded. This is Anthony Wood at IGN.com. Larian Studios has revealed Baldur's Gate 3 has an install size of 122 gigabytes and that players can't, cannot, they can't preload any of it before the game's August 3rd launch. Quote, Baldur's Gate 3 will launch on August 3rd at 5 p.m. Ghent time or your non-Belgian time zone equivalent as shown above. Read a community update posted on the RPG's Steam page. Uh, there will be no preloading of the game before then, end quote. The post also noted that early access save files would not be compatible with the full version of the game at launch while reasoning that, quote, so much has changed that it's really worth it to start afresh, end quote. As reported by PC Gamer, Larian Studios' uh, Sven Vicky uh, said in July it would not be advantageous to have the early access version of the game installed as while, quote, there might be a few bytes that are the same, end quote, the launch game was essentially going to require a full reinstall, end quote, period. Damn. Here's my, I, I don't know anything mm -hmm. about PC gaming. I've, I've been very upfront about that and everything else. All signs point this game coming in hot. Oh yeah, you know what I mean. They moved up the release date to get away from Starfield. They still have that they and it feels like it was all hands deck get PC launched, which they're still trying to. I would assume since you can't preload it, like maybe the final version isn't up, up, up. Then you got to get PS. Like I'm not saying I'm scared, but I am like, oh man, this is coming in hot. Yeah, I. I'll be curious to talk to early access people to know, like, hey, how is the game now? Like, in terms of how, how it runs, how it looks, how it functions, and all that stuff, like, does it feel like it's holding on by, uh, by a thread, right? Like, is there anything to worry about about, yeah, it being moved up and us not being able to, to preload pre it? Because that does speak to it, uh, to it coming in hot. But the fact that they've had early access and they've had, they've had it in people's hands for so long already, at least a version of yeah. it, gives me a little bit more comfortability of... Okay, it'll probably be fine, but yeah, no, not being able to preload a 122 gigabyte thing before launch, I, for me, that's a big bummer. Uh, I, for me, that's a big miss for sure. of, hey, yeah, the clock turns 12 or 9 p.m. in the West Coast, I guess, and I got to wait another few hours to download this gigantic thing. Like 100, that's, a, that's a lot of gigabytes. Yeah. I understand it's a huge game, right? Especially when it has all those cinematics, more cinematics than the Lord of the Rings trilogy, apparently, but man like you got to give people the option to be able to do that if you're gonna if you're gonna do it but also i get at the same time they moved the date up by a month and so they're probably just trying to make sure that they're good and totally i get Starfield. it 
And then a lot of the chat is popping off saying it, it runs great even on medium settings. Somebody said they had a giant crazy. It was great. Somebody said uh, Sven was on the Friends Per Second podcast and he had mentioned something that they were working on and maybe that mm -hmm. was the delay about it. It's going to be interesting no matter what. What's your, do you have any predictions for like Metacritic on this one? <sighs> My, I, what I love about that question is when will there be a Metacritic for it? Mm. You know what I mean? That's a good point. I saw a freelance journalist over the weekend saying like, still don't have code. Mm. It was one of the IGN guys. I forget. No, I was, I don't know if they got in trouble for it, but they were saying like, they don't, somebody tagged me into it. of like, Greg, what do you think of this one? Like, I don't know, man. Like, you know, so it's like, are people, what is, oh, the, here's the things. Oh man, yeah, for all the different ones, divinity's just racking it up. What was divinity original sin? Two? Yeah, can you go higher? If it, let's stick with more modern stuff. Yeah. So the original sin two on switch was a 93. They put it PC, out on iOS. 95, <laughs> 92. Yeah, that's <laughs> So that's the thing is like, I feel like if they deliver, if, if it isn't a shit show at launch, you, I would feel 90s. Yeah, right. Damn. Does we it have this in the league or is it impossible? No, because I think of, it was because of early access. We it. couldn't get it in the good, league. Good, good, good. Which honestly, thank God, because I think Paris Lily would have gotten it. And so we kept that out of his hands. I mean, Paris Lily has literally one of the worst teams. So he, I'd give him this. If you want to oh, go yeah. and just tweet that, get him to, to him right that'd now. That'd bring mind. him up to a strong fifth place in the league if he was able to get what it. What an embarrassment. God. Ladies and gentlemen, you're not an embarrassment. You are there for us. We'd like to be there for you. Uh, if you're there on patreon.com slash kind of funny, of course, you can get this show ad free. But guess what, Jack? You're not on patreon.com slash kind of funny. So here's a word from our sponsors. This episode is brought to you by PayPal Honey, the easy way to save when shopping on your iPhone or computer. Did you know it only takes a few seconds to get it? That means if you go to add it to your laptop or iPhone right now, you could be done before this ad read is even over. And you know what else works fast? Honey's deal finding abilities. Honey is the free shopping tool that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best one it finds to your cart. When you check out, the Honey button appears. All you have to do is click apply coupons. You wait a few seconds as Honey searches for coupons it can find for that and then if it finds a working coupon you will find the prices drop we've saved thousands of dollars thanks to honey buying costumes props tech over the years honestly not using honey is just silly honey doesn't just work on desktop it works on your iphone too just activate it on safari on your phone and you get to save on the go getting honey seriously only takes a few seconds and by getting it you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting this show you can get paypal honey for free at joinhoney.com slash kind of funny that's joinhoney.com slash kind of funny this episode is brought to you by shady rays take on the sun with gear built to last our friends at shady rays have you covered for the warm weather ahead with premium polarized shades at an affordable price durable frames and extremely clear optics for outdoor adventures just like mike likes them shady rays offers the most insane protection in all of eyewear every pair of sunglasses is backed by lost and broken replacements if you lose or break your pair even on day one they told us they will send you a brand new pair no no questions asked and every purchase supports the shady rays impact program which works directly with nonprofits and their communities to empower and make adventure accessible for all walks of life from childhood cancer patients to young adults with serious health conditions exclusively for y'all listening right now shady rays is giving out their best deal of the season go to shadyrays.com and use code kind of funny for 50 percent off two plus pairs of polarized sunglasses try for yourself the shades rated five stars by over 250,000 people Again, that's shadyrace.com. Use code kinda funny. This episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. We all know life can be hard. It's so easy to get caught up in what everyone else needs from you and never take a moment to think about what you need from yourself. I know from experience how often it just seems easier to care about others and keep it moving. But when we spend all of our time giving, it can leave us feeling stretched thin and burned out. Therapy can give you the tools to find more balance in your life so you can keep supporting others without leaving yourself behind. Some of my best friends use BetterHelp and 
love how helpful it can be for learning positive coping skills and how to set boundaries. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapist anytime for no additional charge. For more balance with BetterHelp, visit betterhelp.com slash kindoffunny today and get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash kindoffunny, betterhelp.com slash kindoffunny. Number four, and I'm going to read this fast because it makes me laugh. Bomb Rush Cyberfunk is <laughs> coming to the Xbox and PlayStation in September. This is Taylor Lyles at IGN. Bomb Rush Cyberfunk! Uh, Team Reptile's upcoming action adventure game, heavily inspired by Jet Set Radio, is coming to Xbox and PlayStation on September 1st, two weeks after the game releases on PC and Nintendo Switch. Bomb Rush Cyberfunk uh, was announced back in 2020 by Team Reptile, with confirmation that the game would release on Steam and the Nintendo Switch. The game will have players traverse around the in game world spraying graffiti and using boost packs to reach new heights more interestingly when the game was first revealed over three years ago the developer also confirmed that uh hideki uh naganuma uh the compo- uh, what you nailed it I, I i'm you know i try all the time mm-hmm. this is you know a long long time ago per schneider saw me struggling on ign with japanese names he's like no take it in like two letters right so it's like hi de ki na ga nu ma yeah but like even doing that is hard to do, but that, that was a good, I liked, I liked all the breakdowns of the syllables in that one. Yeah. I like, I, no, it works. Out. Hideki, if you're watching, you got a great name. I think uh, it's Hideki, but still. Sure. Yeah. I got to know. Oh. Uh, you know, come on. Close enough. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> the composer I was more for, impressed with Naganuma, honestly. It's like, you know, it's like a, I'm a dog talking into a microphone. You got to be excited that I'm at least a dog. Talking dog. Give me oh a second. Uh, don't immediately be like, actually, it's... <laughs> yeah, sorry. It's roof, not rough, dog, you idiot. Composer for Jet Set Radio and Jet Set F- Radio Future would compose the music for the game. The game was originally supposed to launch last year, but in August, Team Reptile confirmed that it would delay the release to summer 2023, while also confirming that Bomber Cyberpunk would come to other consoles shortly after its initial release on PC and Switch. In April, the developer revealed the game's new release date for Steam and PC would be August 18th. <gasps> Whew. You excited about this? Oh, man. I'm so excited about this, and I'm so bummed out that it's coming out now. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, why couldn't this come out in December or January or away from all these other video games? I really sure. want to play it. Cause I'm, when will you have the time? Well, when will I have the time? I really enjoy playing. Uh, Jet, it was Jet Set Radio Future that I played a lot. Um, it was at my friend's house, not Addison this time. It was yep. my next door neighbor, Freddie. He had a cyberpunk, or not cyberpunk, um, uh, Jet Set Radio Future. Freddie, are you from the future? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cyberpunk already. He had it 20 years early. Um, but he had it, and like I used to go to his place all the time and play, and like had played multiplayer and all this stuff. And God, that was such a fun game. But yeah, I went back um, to, my, uh, to another friend's uh, place, a few years down the line and played the original jet set radio on a uh, dreamcast and god like they're such unique such vibrant high energy games that i think encapsulate a lot of the style they're going going for so perfectly with the um with the cell shading with the graffiti with the soundtrack again hideki nakamuma absolutely creating some of the best soundtracks ever in these in, in in these games the fact that they got them for this game is fucking fantastic that is an incredible feat and so even just for that i want to check it out but yeah the fact that they're really hearkening back to jet set radio in, uh, in this game has me excited good yeah this is my pat my my red i'll yeah. never i'll never play this I oh look no at it. i don't even look at it bless. oh man you you're missing out you're missing hey bless out. what's up i'll play it for you thank you thank you very Bear, look at him Bear. Bear's gonna be playing right it's on and in um, this Mamre Cyberpunk too many games too many fucking games number five a lot of people are playing Remnant Remnant 2 sells 1 million copies in its first week this is Ryan Dinsdale at IGN.com Gearbox Publishing has announced that Remnant 2 has sold more than 1 million units in its first week across PS5, Xbox Series, and PC. The three-person cooperative shooter launched on July 25th to high praise from players and critics with the excitement around the long-awaited sequel clearly converting to sales too. Quote, Thank you. Nope. Not even that's not even the first word. Should have ad libbed. You really do like lying. <laughs> Quote to everyone who helped us achieve this amazing milestone. <laughs> thank you for your unwavering support. <laughs> said Gunfire Games CEO David Adams. <laughs> this was a multi-year journey for us, and we couldn't be happier to see fans having such a great time with a game we put our heart and soul into. End quote. 
Gearbox Publishing San Francisco president Yum M. I did not know we had a Gearbox Publishing San Francisco. Yeah, right? I saw that too. And I was like, oh. I know right. there's Gearbox Publishing. <laughs> Added, quote, Remnant 2 exceeded our expectations. As a commercial and critical hit, we're incredibly proud of the Gunfire team and everyone here at Gearbox Publishing who brought this title to life, end quote. Hell yeah. Have you played? I started it and immediately just went, this is my kind of game. Really? And bounced off. What didn't yeah. get it? What didn't get it? I think I'm just not a looter shooter person. See, that was the thing. Andy's like, Greg, you would love this. Yeah. Like, you would really, really dig Remnant too. It's just another... T- I have it downloaded, but I've been working on a bunch of other stuff. And I, it, it, it upset me a little bit because I am such a roguelite and um, Dark Souls type of game, right? Like, I am that kind of person. Mm-hmm. And so those elements were appealing to me. But yeah, as I started playing, I was like, oh, yeah, but this is a shooter first. Like, this is... You're yeah, taking people out and then looting them and doing all this stuff. And I'm like, that's just not not me. I respect it. And I like I'm very happy to see them get such success. And I'm happy that like Andy's enjoying it. And I do think that you'd probably be into it as well. Yeah. Um, the Jabroni Boys have been playing a lot at you can check it out, youtube.com slash kinda funny games, see their uh Twitch and YouTube stream archives up there. Is this like Gearbox's uh is this is gonna sound like an obvious question, but is this Gearbox's bag of looter shooters? Because did they also right. do weren't they Godfall? Yeah, they were Godfall. Yeah, and so like they've found a a thing here right obviously with borderlands but yeah between this and then godfall and um and remnant too like i i i'm curious to see like how much further they go with it of like hey yeah we are focusing in on looter shooters this is our thing and we're going to corner yo we know what the audience wants you know what i mean we're going to give it to them good for them good for them give the audience what they want just like we do on page. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, number six. Speaking of giving the audience what they want, Street Fighter Six tournament interrupted by a new Chun Li mod. This is Jordan Midler at Ed VGC. Did you see this video? I did not. We can't show the video here for obvious. Reasons. Can I listen to it? Because I have it pulled up. Oh yeah, you can listen. Well, well, I, yeah, I, I looked listen ahead and I was like, oh, nude. I gotta well, hold on a second now. You know, hold it's hold. more of a fun watch than a listen. Oh, there she is. Well, we are. This <laughs> time. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's a very interesting uh Chun Li costume there. Oh, is it a new costume? Street Fighter 6 tournament was recently interrupted due to a player forgetting to turn off their nude Chun-Li mod. During the tournament, a second round matchup between Kimberly and Chun-Li saw Chun the Chun-Li model appear equipped with a mod that removed her clothes. The NSFW clip was shared on Twitter. In the clip, the commentators are unable to hide their laughter as the match begins before the video feed cuts away from the gameplay footage. At the time of the writing, the footage of the incident remains on Twitch and has been mirrored across social media. It is likely that once the incident is circulated further, Twitch will remove it from the platform due to its rules around nudity. God forbid you see some titties when you're kicking some ass, you know? Why are we doing this? Why are you downloading Chun-Li nude mods? (laughs) But like, less you know why. In your fighting game, <laughs> yeah, like the, the new how's that the new theme? mods should only be in the mech game, right? When you uh, well, slide well, on First in. of all, that's a feature. It's not a mod. <laughs> in the game that has reasons for it, you got to play Thirteen Sentinels Aegis Rim to really understand the importance of the nudity. Uh, but like, just look, just go online and look it up if you want to see Chun Li nude. What does having it in your game add to it? Physics. <laughs> I, <laughs> You answered that too quickly. <laughs> Number seven on the Roper Report. Uh, players get warned against playing Crack Tekken 8 network tests. This is also Jordan Midler at VGC. Tekken players have been warned against playing a cracked version of the recently released closed network test. The test, which is now in its second phase, was quickly data mined and cracked by some players, allowing them to play the game beyond the intended testing time. Beyond. Yeah. A message from Bandai Namco eSports Twitter account read, quote, we have noticed that some players have accessed the Tekken 8 closed network test and played the game beyond the closed test period. Such actions breach the terms of service and the Tekken World Tour Code of Conduct. Also, the unauthorized download or distribution of the game is illegal. Please note that any player found... Ha- that RoboCop game still coming out, too. Yeah. There's Wait, so is, many is fucking that, games. Is that soon? Yeah, it should be like now. Was that your RoboCop voice? Is that why that came to mind? I, well, I, I started going into it, and I was, yeah. I was like... Yeah, I don't even know RoboCop quotes well enough to give him. It's something like, it's something like creep. You know what I mean? So stand down, creep. But I was like, I'm getting to a RoboCop. voice. like, yeah, damn Robo. Yeah, anyways, don't fucking play the crack Tekken thing. It's a, it's this is this, it's a bummer. Um, because yeah, I think this ruins it for the people who do want to go into it professionally and like go enter the tournaments and stuff, right? Like, if you're going in year one in Tekken Eight and you're playing against somebody who's had the cracked version for a year sure, and a half, sure. that fucking sucks. Um, but also it makes me think that Bandai Namco might, 
either give second thoughts to PC closed network tests like this or just heavily DRM them, right? Where you're downloading shit that you don't want to download because now they got to do all the all of what what they can to protect the these early access versions, um which either way any one of these scenarios sucks. And so, yeah, don't crack these games. I thought we had a date for RoboCop Rogue City, but IGN's just saying September 2023. Well, also, I got to play the Tekken 8 closed network test, Greg. What'd you think? It was wonderful. Really? It was incredible. Yeah, I had a great time. Okay. I might talk about it more on PS I Love You. Exciting. Oh, but I forget. PS I Love You is recording on Thursday on patreon.com slash kind of funny, posting on Friday, and that's so far away. If I wanted something more immediate, say what came to the Mama Grab shops, where would I go? You would go to the official list of upcoming software across each and every platform, as listed by the Kind of Funny Games Daily Show hosts each and every weekday. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Out today, Colossal Cave on all the Xboxes. Right to my son, Android. Uh, Akiba's Trip, Dead and Undressed Director is a cut for all you pervs is on PC, PS4, and Switch. You want to go play that one? No, I'm not going to play no yeah undressed cut. I'll play the regular cut. No, this is the whole thing. Will you play the mech cut? Undressed mech cut? I mean, if there's mechs in it, I'll play Just watch yeah. this. You want to see what the... This is a little known thing about this game, all right? What's up? See, that's how they do it. It's Akiba's strip. Oh, but then if you combine them, it's Akiba's Ak strip. Yep, yep, because they're always getting nudie in this game. Huh. Uh, Baroni is on Switch. Boyhood's End, which follows when you play Akiba's strip, is on PC. Jesus. On Guard <laughs> is on PC. Rebellion Corporation is on PC. Dreams is available today as a PlayStation Plus monthly game. It is finally free. You can go play it, and Media Molecule will put out a new game in it called Trend. You should go check out. It's a little train thing. It looks like it's high scores and shit. I'm very excited to play it with Ben later today. Also, Death Star is on PlayStation Plus as well. Also true. Uh, Ghostbuster Spirits Unleashed also released their third free DLC. You get a new map, a new ghost, new cosmetics, and a new price for the game. It's now 20 bucks if you haven't bought Ghostbusters, a game I star in. You should play because I love Ghostbusters. Uh, new dates for you. Dead by Daylight and Alien are crossing over. More info is coming on <laughs> August 8th. All right. Thank you. Uh, and then, hey, Mike, we need to do a stream where we play more Ghostbusters. I want to get back to trying to platinum that. Okay. Nintendo of America tweets Rayman is back and he's the special guest in a new mysterious dimension the Phantoms Opera Network Studio Mario Rabbids Sparks of Hope DLC 3 Rayman in the Phantom Show releases August 30th I didn't That's the more easy. I read that the more I did not know where we were going yeah no that felt like an AI wrote it yeah of like hey just do a crossover and they're okay. like we got you uh, deal of the day for you new Xbox Game Pass games that are coming soon are a short hike Airborne Kingdom Bro Force Forever Limbo and Ever Space 2. We asked people watching live on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games and youtube.com slash kind of funny games to go to kind of funny.com slash you're wrong and tell us what we screw up as we screwed up so we can set the record straight for everybody watching later on youtube.com slash kind of funny games and listening on podcast services around the globe. I don't, this is about, yeah, and hot water also gets d grease off dishes. We're aware. Uh, you're welcome. See, Furry Bastard says, Greg, they make nail clippers with nail catchers, like shell catchers on semi-automatic weapons, lol. I, you don't need all that. I, no, I probably do, and it's just the fact that the fact that I don't see it more means not enough people are doing this, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to go there. Oh, wait, hold on. Are you taking your time when you're clipping your toenails? Like, are you just like, pop, no, pop, yeah, pop. I'm, doing like, I'm, I'm going to pop, pop, pop. Because like, I don't, maybe you just don't pop. Maybe you just like, yeah, that's what Tim was squeeze. saying. Tim was saying I need to be more gentle. Yeah. Uh, the Ur gamer says, if we look at the Kickstarter page for Ratatatan, mm -hmm. no official platform is made, but getting a console version was a stretch goal that is already close to being reached more than three fourths there that I might look into. Maybe I got to give him, but 50 bucks is the steep price. But I don't want that stuff. It's going to happen for your dream game. Rataton. But again, it's not. I mean, my dream game is a Superman game. What if they put Superman DLC in Rataton? Or about sixty thousand dollars. You're, you're not playing as a god. You're playing as Superman. And he's thread. He's threatening these little <laughs> creatures. <laughs> now he's Homelander, I guess. In my, in my reality. Oh, this is interesting. I didn't know this. AK says PlayStation Five cannot play audio CDs, though Xbox Series X can. This huh. is due to software licenses required for playing audio CDs, which Sony opted not to pay for. I feel like Sony would. Just have those, like, have that technology on deck. 
You would think Sony. That, you think Sony Music and Sony? Are there? No, they yeah. don't. They don't talk to each other that way. That's not how it's going to be over there. Sadly, um, ladies and gentlemen, that's another episode of Kind of Funny Games Daily in the Bank. Tomorrow, your hosts are Snow Bike Mike and Blessing at Oye Junior. Yeah. Thursday, it's Blessing and Tim. Friday, it is Tim and Blessing. If you are watching live, we are, of course are going to do our little KFGD post show where we go through the super chats. After that, the crew is playing Mass Effect Two with Nick. You, of course, can watch all of that live on Twitch.tv slash Kind of Funny Games, YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny Games. You can check it out later on YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny Games if you miss it live and you're listening to the podcast right now. <gasps> Remember, this has been Kinda Funny Games Daily. We're here each and every weekday with the nerdy news you need to know about. We love you. We appreciate you. We encourage you to go to patreon.com slash kind of funny and keep the lights and mics on. If you got no bucks, though, use the epic creator code kind of funny when you're checking out. Uh, just go to youtube.com slash kind of funny games, twitch.tv slash kind of funny games. Like, subscribe, share, follow, Amazon Prime sub, blah, blah, blah. If you're podcasting, leave a review. Well, not if you're podcasting. Leave, if you're listening to our podcast, Lead, 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 but also, lead. if you're a podcaster and you're listening to this podcast, don't don't listen to a podcast while you podcast. That seems like it'd be hard to do. I can try it. I feel like I can pull it off. All right, cool. We'll All try right. that and tomorrow. Cool. That's the thing. Put on the headphones and see if you can podcast while you talk to Mike White. Let's do a podcast. A podcast I listen to. Peace, I love you, <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Until next time, it's been our pleasure to serve you. He did say Tim, not Tim. Oh, sorry, Tim. 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 Mike's here, everybody. Hi, Mike. What like about Mike? reacting to a podcast while being on a podcast? Sounds pretty cool. You know, that's the hot thing people, right now. Say, reaction content. At, yeah, yeah, it's a big thing right now. People are getting real mad at... Um, that's, that's a nude Chun-Li right there getting ready to fight. Oh, oh, snap. You know Blessing, what? are you playing this? You're right about the physics. Is this what you're playing? I mean, you know they'd have physics. This is not how I'm playing, Mike, no. This Every curve on playing? a PC is like, oh, physics. Yeah, that's why I play on PlayStation. That's why oh, I'm okay, not a PC okay. guy, because I don't you're need... playing on PlayStation. I don't need these theater. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. What's up, Eric? Hey, everybody. It's the post show. We're yeah, here. Big conversation we're about uh, reaction content lately. The That's going to affect big us, topic right? Because we're reaction content. Yes. But we're not watching people's whole YouTube We're not videos. watching YouTube videos. But yeah. also, my, my thing is like. What you, what's your thing? My, my thing is, because people are getting mad at like uh, Hassan for like watching other uh -huh. people's yeah, yeah. stuff. Uh -huh. And when we put out the Black Hair episode of The Blessing Show. Yeah. So badly did we want Hassan to watch that. So, bad. <laughs> so, so bad. badly did Blessing, the person yeah. who created that, want other people to watch that yeah, to show off his great work. It would still yeah. give a boost, and even uh, Austin Ox, uh, yeah. Hassan's editor, like did a breakdown of like another video that he reacted to from a small creator. Um, I think that there's an argument to be made when there's at least like commentary, uh, additive commentary being made. Yeah, but I think the I think the what is it the so conversation started because XQC? of. Yeah, you know, XQC. Like, oh, we just pick and just, choose who we get mad at. Well, XQC just fucking stares at the video. Oh, it doesn't have any. It doesn't really it. make any like <laughs> added well, uh, commentary. Is, were any of the people that were watching X XQC's stream would they have clicked into that vid that's video? That's fair. Individually? Yeah, is oh, it never. Because like that's my thing is you're giving a boost no matter Big what. Big boost, yeah. Regardless. Like people are gonna click into this video. Like I would not have gotten those views regardless. Mm -hmm. So you're putting more eyes on my thing. Yeah, that's how I view it. But if people view it differently, they view it differently. Yeah. Uh huh. So that's the hot. Topic they can be wrong. Is what yeah. You're saying. I'm open to being wrong. Well, welcome in, everybody. Of course, here at Kind of Funny Games Daily, these two are never wrong because you can correct them by going to kindoffunnygamesdaily.com slash you're wrong. That's not Close the correct enough. one, but you can correct <laughs> kind of funny me. Uh, welcome in, everybody, for your Super Chat post show on a lovely Tuesday. T -t Tuesday. We are back again answering your questions, comments, concerns, diving a little bit deeper into today's news stories. Only if you want it. Don't forget, if you're watching over on YouTube, you can Super Chat or... If you're watching over on Twitch, don't forget to use that new hype chat hype. feature or subscribe at the tier one to three level. We'll read your questions, comments, and concerns. Just like Matthew wrote in and says, M -m 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 Dark Matthew. Souls, Lord Steez the Source is in the house. As many of you know, blessing oh, yesterday, I have defeated Dark Souls oh. and I parried the final boss to completion. Thank Oh, <laughs> congratulations. Yeah. I, why would you word it like that? It was a lot of Harry. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much. It was a lot of fun. It was awesome to play through Dark Souls all by myself, Greg. That was the Ooh. big catch. Was no Andy, no sad boy Sean, mm. just Mike, and a whole lot of help from the chat. You know what I mean? Hell like, yeah, dude. if they didn't tell me where to go, I wouldn't have got there. Yeah. But how, how does it feel to be done? Uh, it feels great, Bless. That is a fun game. That's an awesome game. Mm -hmm. uh, took me about 30 hours. 
Okay. So about 10, three-hour sessions. Not yeah. too long, not too bad. And uh, the bosses were really cool. There were some cool, unique ones. There were some bad ones. You could definitely see the framework of where we are today. Mm -hmm. And uh, I look forward to doing some more. I Maybe like Sekiro. That, Maybe it's time for Sekiro. Oh, for you me. not played through Sekiro? Uh, no, I got to the tower and I gave up there. Oh, man. Sekiro, easily one of the best action games yeah, yeah. I've ever played. So fucking good. This could be you, Black. You're up next. Is it my favorite? Uh, it's up there. It's top three. By from software games. Now, have I only played three from software mm. games? Yes. Okay, there you go. There you go. <laughs> Sean writes in and says, KFGD and Persona 5 Royale. What a great time. Oh, yeah, sure. There's a little combo on a combo. I like that Wait, one. are you a good pocket? Are they in the dungeon? There's yeah, they have. To. I hope, yeah. yeah, I hope they're like grinding There's in Mementos or something. Like that. But we did, I forget when this happened, but we did have a conversation with a chatter who loved Persona 5. But skipped all the story stuff and only just played the game Monsters. and skipped all of the just madness. like cutscenes and dialogue. They're just like, I just like playing the game. That's madness. It's insane. What if we did From Software in review? I've been pushing uh, for people to do their own like uh, in reviews like I do. That'd be fun. For a long time. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I think that'd be cool. I would never. I'm not as talented as he is. I would never. I would like to see a you, snow you bike mic that. video essay. Uh, <laughs> up next, Joshua writes, hypothetically, if GTA 6 could be a 2023 holiday title, would it be the cherry on top of this banger of a year in gaming? Or would it be too much, Greg? Uh, too much. You can right? never have too much. too much. Do we need No, you can never have too much. It's too much. If anything, no, I want, we don't, I want we, more games We don't to need it right now, Mike. Yeah, you might not need it, but you can never have two. You don't bite the hand. You just say, yeah, give me more. Give me, give me. Give me, give me more. Give me more. Remember that song? Yeah, of course. <laughs> You're saying that it'd be too much. No, it's not too much. You can br bring it on. If they want to release it this holiday season, let's get it out here. Let's have a good time. I don't have the time. Oh Listen, I got gosh. Hell Divers 2 to play this holiday season, all right? He does have Hell Apparently, that's too. happening in October. Don't do not it. You're playing it with me. I'm, I'm definitely playing you that game. Bony Boys are going to have a lot excited. of fun. We're going to get in there. That we're game's going to be so much fun. Oh, I'm, yeah. yeah, I'm excited for the tweaks. I want us to still be punishing. No, it's cool. But, like, I am excited to see that new camera angle yeah. and what that brings to the table. That, can't that's wait to shoot Nick in the head. You know what, what you're going to get this fall from Rockstar is Red Dead Redemption. Rem on Dead Nightmare. Or remake. One the first one. The first one. Remastered. Yeah. That's what the streets are saying. That's what the streets be saying. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Would cool. you be down for that instead of GTA the next one? Uh, absolutely not. No, I don't want to no? go. I don't want to go back to uh, Red Dead One of all games. Even if it's no. like the same kind of uh, facelift that they gave the GTA games, except good this time because <laughs> last time they uh, no. they fucked up. I, I don't have any love for Red Dead One. Okay. No, I, I'm really wow. excited about that. I would much rather have GTA Six this holiday season. This holiday. You're 100%. insane, Mike. Yeah, no, yeah, that's 100%. insane. I would prefer a Red Dead one. Okay, and I'm not, I'm I'm, I'm kind of with you that I'm not a Red Dead person. Yeah, yeah. But GTA Six would just be too much. How? About, let's say this. Let's be real. Mm -hmm. They come out with Red Dead One. Yes. Are you actually playing all the way through that? Are you playing I mean, five hours of it and then never playing? I'm it playing again? five hours of it. Okay. Yeah. I, play, I, I, I play GTA you to Six. Mexico. You play it all. Oh, yeah, yeah but like they can drop GTA Six whenever. They can drop you it can like the, <laughs> the day of like a close loved one's funeral. I'm still playing yeah, yeah. that thing all the way through. You see, I didn't uh, name them the loved one. You I see Oblivion it. possibly getting a big time remake. <laughs> you like you had a premonition of who's about to die, right? <laughs> yeah, I was like, actually, I don't want to speak that into existence. Um, Oblivion. You see Oblivion, the oh, yeah. rumor on the streets. Yeah, they they're remaking remake. that. But there are, there's already a team that has been working so hard on a mod. Sky Oblivion mod, mm -hmm. and now so there's just oh, so now like I get two different Skyrim combined with Oblivion. Is that yeah, essentially it? it's like the Skyrim engine, but Oblivion now, and oh. so they're redoing all of Oblivion in that, so you could have a proper. I mean, this like, happens every single time because that happened to the yeah, Metroid so two now guys. You got two, yeah. They made uh, another Metroid two remake, and then Nintendo was like, "Fuck you, we're making Samus Return," <laughs> and now you. like all our work is just thrown out the window. I'm excited for this. I, I I do love Oblivion. Oblivion. I have a big soft spot for that, so I, I do like that. But uh, back to it. No, GTA 6 could drop right now. It would be great. It would continue to add the cherry to the banger of a year. Yeah, but like, cherry to the banger right the now, year. next year, I mean, there are games announced for next year, but like next year, there's so much time to like put down your flag. Yeah. Right? If GTA 6 was a fall next year game, mm -hmm. other games can look at that and go, all right, let's give that the time and space. Because people will give that the time and space. Mm -hmm. Nobody's coming out the same time as GTA 6. I want a full three weeks. Like after October, like I want a break, you know, and GTA 6 would go against that. More yeah. games, please. More life. Can be more can energy. Be playing, um, <laughs> could you just quote Drake? <laughs> Getting ready for the concert. Because what? November is going to be WarriorWare Move It, which I'm excited for. Like a Dragon Gaiden, the man who erases name. 
Persona 5 Tactics, Mario RPG. Yeah. We're too oh, busy. fuck, yeah. We're too busy. Could have more. Avatar's yeah, like November and December, December are my Final more. Fantasy 16 months. Like, that's when I'll finally catch up on the game. I don't need GTA 6, Mike. Justin34M says, congrats, Mike, the Dark Souls Master. Well, thank you so much to you and Matthew for congratulating me on that. Thank you for the chat for helping me. Uh, CJ writes in and says, I think the new Twisted Metal game should follow the tone and story of the TV show. <gasps> Such a surprisingly good show. Greg? People do like the show. I, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm seeing a lot of positivity around that. Uh, Tim! I haven't watched it yet. Because I only watch This Is Awesome. I exclusively watch Peacock. When you turn on Peacock, awesome. you're going to This Is Awesome. There's a new episode Friday, ladies and gentlemen. Summer Slam. And I know what a lot of you have said. I'll watch them later. I'll get yeah. there later. Peacock lost something like $651 million. <laughs> get your ass over there and watch it now. Yeah. All uh, right? Just uh, put it on and watch, watch it. Them. Tweet watch about it. it at Peacock. Tweet at WWE about it. Have I'm, a great time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, um, I, I started up the first episode of Twisted Metal. Oh, peacock. Oh, on, on that, Peacock. This is awesome. And then so 10 minutes in, today. I was like, actually, I want to watch Zoe 102, and I did that instead. You're ridiculous. My, uh, Tim, we need an update on what you think of Twisted Metal on Peacock. Uh, I am six episodes done now, so four left. So in. So yeah. damn in. Can't yeah. wait to keep watching it. If they make yeah. a game, a new game, would you want them to follow the tone of the show? Yeah. Eh, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I don't think that that would work necessarily. The thing about this is, like, it's, it's a comedy. Like, it's a sitcom more than it's any, like, uh... It's not Last of Us. You know what I mean? So when you go in with that, I'm laughing. The weird references they're making. I think my favorite thing about the show is it knows what it is in the sense of it is a post-apocalyptic situation where they are all dealing with it. We always talk about Ellie and Last of Us of like, man, imagine growing up and not knowing, what, never having seen a movie or never having seen all this. Twisted Metal deals with that stuff in a pretty cool way, except people's last touchstone was Jay Kwan's hit Tipsy from 2005. Now everybody like, in you the know? club get tipsy. Let's yeah. go. So it, there's a sex scene set to that song. Oh, oh yeah, I gotta catch up. In a ball I gotta pit. watch. All right. In a ball oh. pit. You know what I mean? More people should be having sex to Tipsy. Uh, I would like just more Twisted Metal in my life. Do you think we'll get a Twisted Metal game? Oh, eventually. Are they making yeah. that? Yeah, they are. Yeah. They're making that. Yeah. I mean, they've... As long as it's not Destruction All-Stars. Well, remember that? Oh! Yeah, that oh! So they gave it to the Destruction All-Stars scene <laughs> to make. Oh, but yeah. then they went, oh, wait, you guys made Destruction All-Stars, and they took it away. Get out of town. <laughs> yeah, yeah no, that's, they didn't. That's what the reports say, yeah. Wow. They're like, oh, shit, actually, no, we're not going to have you make this. And they gave it to... I think they gave it to Fire... Walk? Fire... Sprite? Sprite? Aloy <laughs> hey, drinks Sprite. Okay. okay. So she's the one climbing the mountain. Oh, so it would have been Fire Sprite then, I believe. Okay. Because they, they got yeah, done with they, that game. Oh. Yeah, because Firewalk is making cool. the multiplayer shooter. Okay. Fire Sprite okay. owned by Sony, though Firewalk also now owned by... Fuck. I'm looking this up. <laughs> Onward and upward. Ryan PH writes in and says, who at Kind of Funny will be reviewing Starfield? Greg, you're the master of content. Are you able to say such a thing? Yeah, because I already said it. I believe. Wow, he I already think, said it. I think I did it on Gregway over on Patreon.com okay. slash Kind of Funny. Uh, but we're happy to publicly confirm to everybody that the one, the only, the best... A voice in the business, That's Paris right. Lilly, will be doing our lead oh, review for Starfield. Interesting. Yeah, uh, we're hoping, we're hopeful, obviously, that you know we'll get a bevy of codes and we'll all join them on the games cast and do an FAQ on the X cast and really blow it out. We have a bunch of plans for Starfield, uh, but we're kind of in that limbo right now of like, okay, well, we don't have no embargoes, we don't know how many codes, we don't know whatever, so we'll wait and see. But Paris, if we get one code, is getting it. He's gonna give it our first six, first six out of five. Hey guys, they sent me game this of the chair. generation. <laughs> They Game sent me the Starfield we... chair and I love it. In I gotta get a chair. <laughs> you know what I mean? What does your Paris voice remind me of? Do it again. In and out, so <laughs> it's getting worse. It's getting worse. I'm not an impression guy. I drop you know, kick I like Tondo to sometimes, but Andy's so good. <laughs> drop kick Tondo writes in and says Ghostbusters Platinum is no longer bugged. No excuses, Greg. You yeah, saw that. No, I remember they got that updated and a whole bunch of stuff did, and I popped on and I got a bunch, but I still have more to do. Okay. I like He's that. doing Sly Stallone. That's, that's who it was. <laughs> Thank uh, you, Chad. No, no, I got, no, just give me some a drink. I got this article from VGC from 2022, January yeah. 2022, so yeah, yeah. almost years ago. 
uh, Sony sw- switches Twisted Metal reboot developer. PlayStation has changed its plans for the in-development Twisted Metal reboot, sources have told VGC. Last year, VGC reported that a new car combat installment, which by release would be the series' first in a decade, has started early development at Liverpool, UK-based Destruction All-Stars developer Lucid Games. However, VGC has been told that the project has since ceased development at Lucid, and according to sources, Sony has decided to instead move the series' revival to one of its first-party studios in Europe. Sony and Lucid did not immediately respond for com- comment. It's understood that Sony still intends to bring it back in the TV show. Uh, early work, in early work has begun at an unnamed first party studios. Uh, sources did not provide an explanation for the change of developer. However, one person suggested, suggested that the poor reception of Lucid's PS5 title, Destruction All Stars, could have contributed to the decision. Tough. Jizzle dupes. <laughs> I know most of KF was somewhat disappointed with Viewfinder, but have any of y'all checked out Humanity? Money. Best puzzle game of the year so far. Puzzle Poppy, do you give Humanity a shot? Oh, I did. Um, I, d- I didn't complete it, but what okay. I played, it's fucking excellent. Love it. And I can't think of it, the any other puzzle game from this year, unless we count Zelda, which I could see okay. the argument, but okay. I'm, I'm not okay. going to count Zelda to this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think it's in the running for best puzzle game of the year. Okay. It's fucking fantastic. Have you played Humanity? Uh, no, not since we did it at the uh, showcase for our GDC showcase. Oh, they had it that, that the they came through. They, they, they came, came here. Through, yeah. Oh, uh-huh. snap! I didn't realize that. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I played really it. Cool. I played a little bit of it. I'm just not a puzzle guy. Uh-huh. I'm that kind of puzzle guy. So I played yeah. a few of the rounds. Like I get why people love this. This is not how I need to spend my time in a box. Yeah, I played a little bit of it in VR as well. Oh, how was that? And it was cool. Like it's the yeah. same game, but like you're just more immersed in it. And I thought it was really neat to like have these crowds like flying like across you when you're actually there and seeing it in real time yeah. i thought that was really neat no i had there's no reason to boot it up in vr beyond that um yeah. but yeah really cool game sounds lit oh uh, planet of lena that's probably the other oh, oh planet of lena that fucking a, kicks ass is that a puzzle game yeah yeah it's like a puzzle platformer it's like an inside like puzzles yeah puzzle platformer okay mm. puzzle platformer platformer yes. it's a yeah, pp no, platformer I would... Bless, you got to stop defending your, your shit list Platformer. on the shit list. <laughs> Jose Cortez writes in and says, How do y'all feel about the love Zack Snyder gives DC movies and all the hate and shade pop culture throws at him? Keep up the good work. Zack Snyder Justice League cut is the goat. Why be, why people be throwing shade at this poor guy? Oh, a lot of people don't like Zack Snyder movies. You know what I mean? They didn't like how he did, did anything. Did you watch the scene. one where he, they were fighting zombies out in Vegas and then the zombie sure. had a baby and she was like, ah, she was screaming, right? But then they killed that zombie and then the guy goes crazy. Well, I feel like <laughs> I've seen all the zombie movies. Yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're yeah. talking about the one with Batista? There? Yeah, that's the latest okay, one. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. I like that one. I like that one. Okay. It wasn't bad. I mean, I don't, I don't, it wasn't great. It's very rare for yeah, me to yeah. leave a zombie movie being like, that's fucking garbage. Yeah. Like, I, <laughs> I go in there and I'm like, what do you got to say here? What do you got to say? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one of the problems with Zack Snyder is okay. uh, it, it, from a top level, not the main. Yeah. It's the fact that Snyder versus fans. Okay. Some of them are so fucking annoying mm. that they have mm. soured the pool even more. It used to be people that I don't like Zack Snyder movies. They're all, fl- they're all, they're all sizzle, no steak. Okay. And then it was, you know, his audience. Doing a bunch of crazy stuff to get the Snyder verse and stuff. Oh yeah, going be, losing be, their marbles. Be, be, and like, don't get me wrong. I like, I wanted, uh, I, I, I enjoyed for what it was the Snyder verse. I wanted to see the Snyder cut, but there were like people who were being really asshole about it. You know, being yeah, yeah. Like, mean campaigns and stuff yeah. like that. And so it's like, it's just people being annoyed. Okay, okay. I watched okay. the first episode of The Bear last night. Okay, and there's okay, a good Snyder, Snyder line. Yeah. In first that. one, the season one or season first, two? First one, season one. Uh, so you're very, about to get addicted. Very yeah, first episode yeah, I watched. Yeah. And yeah, there's a line where like there's a bunch of nerds outside waiting to play the, oh, this yeah, arcade yeah, game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's yes. like, if you fucking QAnon, Zack Snyder, uh, uh, <laughs> Final Cut fucks, like, like basically just yeah, throws yeah. a, sh- uh, a yeah, spray yeah. in there. Uh-huh. And I was like, damn, that's kind of like, damn, I didn't realize that like the Zack Snyder fans were like lumped that. into that. Yeah. Wow. Okay. How'd you like the first episode of uh, The Bear? Really good. Very intense. Yeah. Like very, well, a lot more fast uh, oh, yeah. paced than I would have thought. That's what it's got to be when you're working in a restaurant, bless. I mean, I mean that's fair. Yeah. Say so, yeah, chef. Jeff yeah, chef. the Maverick Heard. writes in and says, "Just started One Piece and I'm already on episode 22. Mike, have you been watching Jujutsu Kaisen? I have not started Jujutsu Kaisen. My guy that helped me with my glasses, mm-hmm. he was big into Jujutsu Kaisen. Oh, and Nick he Scarpino. was like, "You got to watch it." And I was like, "Sir, <laughs> I'm on a one piece journey okay? mm-hmm. and I'm, I cannot deviate. But from like this. that journey is never going to end though. And that's the best part. Bless. It's a never that's ending journey. Part. I don't want it to end. It's Jesus. the never ending story, but better. Every episode I finish, I go, it only continues to get better. One I don't know how one piece continues to get better. Wow. I met a funky guy with an Afro. Yeah. On a ghost ship. Oh, <laughs> it's going yeah. to be lit. Bro. Did, you guys, lit. Did, you, did you or better ever, ever finish that one piece game? 
Odyssey? Yeah. No, no because I didn't want to be spoiled. Yeah, it takes place after issue. like 800 episodes. So oh, it was like, yeah. I, I played like the first hour and like even in the first few minutes already met characters that I've never met or mm -hmm. d like didn't even know existed. Uh, so that was like kind of the rough thing with, um, with Odyssey there. Um, I want you to know I'm going to give up that fight. I'm just going to play it. Dude, like, I'm at the point now where it's like, I, I just got to give up. I want to play. I mean, you don't games. need to play it. It's not, I don't well, I want to yeah, check it out. I want to, okay, I want to play one okay, piece gotcha. games. You know what I, I mean? I don't know if this was like issue. game of the year consideration. No, <laughs> no, no, no. But it was a cool little t take on turn-based strategy. I think Barrett will say that as well. Yep. They had a fun little different, different kind of vibe of like, here's the normal fight, but there's also a fight going on over there and you can kind of like flip flop into two different oh. fights at once. It was kind of interesting. I kind of like that. A little different vibe. Yeah, it was cool. I like a good flip flop fight. You can hear more Jujutsu Kaisen and One Piece talk next week on the third episode episode of kind of anime good promotion that mario rivera writes in and says love that kind of funny has become a workplace where greg keeps bringing up 9 11 and showing his co-workers various nudies okay well Here, mario that i'm sorry i made a fucking pledge in 2001 to never forget all right you want to just sweep it under the rug not me all right and i'm sorry i still have questions about that day <laughs> I made a I made a pretty good 9/11 joke at um during our board game night uh this weekend. Wait on me. Where we were playing this game trial by trolley, yeah, right? Where yeah, it's like yeah, it's mm -hmm. a trolley problem game where you have to like put cards on the rail to try and either convince people to like not hit uh, or not like, you know, choose that as the the decision of you're going to run over those people. Yeah. And so one of the ones that I put on the the opponent's team was like an evil mime that's like <laughs> killing people. And <laughs> The mime, like in the image of the mime, the mime has like up like a fake, like just their handgun up, and like they're apparently they're murdering people with their handgun. And when we're making our arguments of why you should, why they should run over the mime, I was like, think about it. If this mime has enough power to take out people with their hands, like what else can they do? Like you're just one of these away from mime 911. Like you have it, you have the power to stop mime 11. And mime 11 was a hit with the crew. It was a hit. People love mime. It was mime a hit. 11. He says that was a hit. In the chat, play Jason says, "Are we just making fun of? Are we just casually making fun of 9/11 now?" I'm down. You're watching a post show to a video game show, <laughs> all right? You want to yell at PC people more? Is that what you want? What do you want from him? Let's keep it moving. Calvin writes in and says, "Do you think games will ever cross into the based on a true story genre of stories?" I mean, the Blair yeah, Witch Project yeah. already is a video game, and Blair Witch was definitely real. Remember when that girl, she had the video game, and she's like, I'm so afraid that the booger, the booger came out of her face. Of the God, what a crazy time that was back in the 90s. I'll tell you what. Crazy time back then. Um, We've already had a bunch. Like, I can't think of any of them off the top of my head. But here, yeah, so this is just playing from, yeah, nine. Here's Game Informer. Uh, Brothers in Arms, Road to Hill 30. Uh, Velvet Assassin, Assassin's uh -huh. Creed 3. All right, we might be reaching on that. <laughs> <laughs> we might be reaching on Assassin's Creed. I wouldn't think about it. It happened in there, I'm sure. Uh, 1979 Revolution, Black, Fr Black Friday, L.A. Noir, That Dragon Cancer, The Saboteur, Valiant Hearts, The Great War. There's a bunch. There's stuff going on there that are based on okay. the story. Okay, based. Uh -huh. What do you think, Bless? What, are you into based on a true story video games? I mean, to the extent of the games that Greg was listing, yeah. Like, I don't, really, I don't need a super realistic documentary sort of video game. Like, I think mm -hmm. there's room for that. I think that stuff could be interesting. I think the Assassin's Creed Discovery Tour stuff, like, I know that's not, like, based on a true story, but it is historical. A hey, cool let me idea. learn about yeah, this yeah, thing, right? Cool. Like, I, I think, like that. I think video games can add a lot of value to that. But, yeah, I think if you're going to have a fun, let's say, action game based on a true story, then it's going to be lo very loosely based. Loosely. PDX V-Man writes in and says, Greg, have you been keeping up with my adventures with Superman? Yes. Uh, this is must-watch television for me, and there's not much of that in my life. Uh, this wow. is uh, usually a Saturday morning watch with Ben. Drop in. Nice. Try to get him out. Try to see what's up. We, we is he noticing? Is the kid watching and like noticing? Is he aware? He's watching and noticing. I don't think okay. he's like watching. I don't think he knows like it's Superman yeah, or yeah. whatever, but he's sitting there and watching it. That's dope. Right now we got a That's big, wild. right now we're having a big moment in the house that yesterday at breakfast, Ben said Ghostbusters when the, when the <laughs> echo was on. So we played Ghostbusters and then he said he got up and danced and then he wanted to listen to Ghostbusters on repeat. And then I got a text from the nanny yesterday that was like, I've listened to Ghostbusters 900 times today. And I said that oh, those yeah. are rookie numbers. Pump them up. And then today at breakfast, <laughs> he said it too. I got a video to put up of me and him dancing. Having a great little time out there. God, what a beautiful see fatherhood. Bless, when are you ready to jump into the pool of fatherhood? Are you ready for this? 
<laughs> Never look at me and ask that question. <laughs> what are you ready for this one? Uh, what, what's the song? What's your Ghostbusters that you would dance with your child? What's the song that you? I think for me it'd be the Space Jam theme. Oh man, yeah. Space Jam for sure. Yeah. Bless. Oh my, we bust out the mini hoop and just start slamming yep. jamming. Oh my god, oh, slamming you know you're, Now I'm ready to have yeah. a child. <laughs> now now oh you're ready for fatherhood. Yo, I'm ready. <laughs> 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 ah, I love it, y'all. Baron, I'm going to send the dance in uh, Ghostbusters. We're going to check that out. Assets, all right, Baron? Joshua Roger. D., this one's for you, bro. Roger. I didn't know he switched out. Can if you, you pull had, it up? If, you, uh, if, yeah, I should be able to. Uh, Roger, can you pull it, pull it up for us? <laughs> <laughs> I you, I got it. You don't have I'm just double checking Roger, you know what I mean? Making sure he's on I'm the I'm fucking on the telling ball. him what to do. You Roger, don't double check us. Discount double check. It's gonna take a second. I mean, I oh, see. That's why I was gonna ask a question. Yeah. Well, then you. But then you were just Joshua D. Joshua D. If you haven't seen Bel Air on Peacock, you're Ooh. missing out. What's up? What's I've only, up? I need. I need a catch. What's up? I've only played. I've only watched the first couple of episodes of Bel Air. Okay. Okay. But I fucking loved it. Carl, really? Carlton is a little bitch in that show. Damn. Yeah, he's Damn. the fucking worst. But, but also, does he do the dance? No. I mean, Man, not if so you don't far. Hit the Carlton on that. That not, not, I mean, you know the deal with Bel Air. It's a dark, Different gritty, take. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like mm-hmm. the tone, is, it's a drama. It is not a comedy. So like everything is a lot more real and a lot more serious. I am happy to hear there that it's go. still we, going. We need audio. Yeah, can we get this audio cranked? I like that. Greg, you see, Greg is starting off small, right? He starts in the box, just like. Well, I do. Stay, that's what. Yeah, he, I'm matching. In the box. I'm not trying to. Ma- I'm trying to match what Benny's up to out there. You know. Oh, you're not teaching him dance moves. Not yet. Teach him not yet. Moves. Not yet. You got to put him in a box like the mime, right? Mom 11. <laughs> See, <laughs> Mom 11 was a hit. <laughs> Guys, I don't know how to do audio. I updated VLC. I don't know. All right, fine. Don't worry about it. Just Wait, is that Roger's voice? Let me dance to it. Yeah, hi, Roger. Hey, Roger. <laughs> Yeah, you got to be teaching that kid dance moves. That's on you. But see, like, the dance like he's, hold on, they're going to get distracted by the shoes, but I'll come back here in a second. And then I, the, I'm just mimicking what he's doing because I want to, I, you can't dance wrong, right, Bless? No, you and can see, never go. dance see, he's wrong. You just it. let he's the music take control. Look at him go. Look at him go, you know? Dance he's a little fun. wrong. Did you hear Poppin'. that? He's Poppin'. Pitbull. Mm-hmm. It's coming to town. We're all going to go. Who's we're all? Everyone in no. this company. We're <laughs> all. Not. It's a team outing. I'm going. I'm, going I'm, just, I'm not going to Just like how we went to baseball for you, we're all going to pit bull for me. God, I am. And it's going to be a great time. Baseball for you. Mike, for you're me. part of the baseball. <laughs> <laughs> it was for Bless. And I had a great time God. at it. I'm, I'm still sad I'm not seeing Drake. We could still make that dream a reality. I can't make that You, me, and reality. Roger, we can have that I have conversation. We got a wedding. <laughs> Ninth Wonder writes in and says, hey, guys. Have any of you seen the show Warrior on Max? Thoughts? Don't See the tile is. pop up a lot. A lot of conversation about Warrior. Warrior. If Nick was here, he would talk about no, it. I have no idea. Warrior. Keep it on your keep, put it on your list if you're looking for something. You know, I want, what is it? What's happening in Warrior? Type into Max. Roger, can I get a rundown of what Warrior you never, is? You have no idea what Warrior is. I said is. the tile just keeps popping up, but Nick hypes it up a lot. Nick's be too. Everybody, no everybody in chat is saying A lot Warrior of people be shit. yapping about it. I See? watched the the show where um, Elizabeth Olsen has an affair with oh. uh, what's his name. But I've only I've watched every episode except for the last one. Okay. I feel like I've gotten my fill from the first for the like first five out of six episodes. We did like two or three. And then it was like we. You, know, you want to watch it again? Not really. It's, yeah, it was fine. But like, it's like I got to the thing, and now I'm like, I, I don't really care about the rest. I just I was just here for like the big, um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The, the big moment. Okay. Well, thank Love you to you. Ninth Wonder for your first ever super chat on YouTube. That's so kind of you. Warrior. We have three left. Do you want to hear about Warrior? Really? Yeah, I want, please, really cool. please tell me. Please this tell me. This is from the Wikipedia page. Yep. Warrior is an American martial arts crime drama television series that premiered blah, blah, blah. It is based on an original concept and treatment by Bruce Lee. Wow. Fucking cool. I might That's watch awesome. Warrior. There you go. Now you know. No, now you know. you know. Greg's got a child. He can't be watching that kind of mature stuff. You know what I mean? Got to gotta watch. Children can't be watching that. That mature stuff. You ever heard you that? You know you're watching mature stuff as a kid. <laughs> <laughs> Up next, Michael C. writes in and says, Mike, are you going to get these new Xbox gaming chairs from that were just announced? Did you see these new Xbox gaming chairs? No. Roger, can you bring up the new Xbox gaming chairs if that's possible? Check uh, Idle Sloth on Twitter. Uh, Let me tell you what. I've already purchased one Xbox gaming chair, and I'm happy to report I'm about to blow the budget on a second Xbox gaming chair. Because these ones, these ones look comfy. The other one, let me be real with you really quick. That wasn't comfortable, okay? Mm-hmm. So I need a comfortable Xbox gaming chair, and this could be it, all right? Looking pretty dope. Looking pretty lit. Look at this, Bless. 
It's a chair. Edition Xbox. Is very <laughs> <laughs> it's just a chair. Look at, it's just look a chair. at this, Vlad. Look at this. It's got the Xbox logo by the You head. see the logo? See the logo? The logo is kind of cool, but no, it's just a chair. $1,000. And there's also another one, Raj. 1500 1500 Because who doesn't need a $1,500 chair, you know what I mean? God dang. If this chair isn't comfortable, <laughs> this is going to be hell to pay Xbox. Shame on me. Can I give a, can I, can I give a shout out to a man that I love? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, this, yeah, random, yeah. But this is coming off the okay. TV talk. Ooh, actually, I kind of like this chair. Okay, yeah. Earn gaming uh -huh. chair. Mm -hmm. See, this I kind of get. You like that one? Yeah. I just like the, the pattern in the back. Oh, see, interesting, because I liked the other one. I liked the white one. Whoa, it has a spine. Yeah, this one's nasty. What's with up with the spine? spine? That's for good, uh, you know, back support. I'm in. Okay. Okay. Uh, only have a shout out to John Bernthal. I was Johnny on B. I was on TikTok last yeah. night. Let and, me tell yeah. you something. Let me tell, let me tell you something. <laughs> I, I got the clip you question, of him in Daredevil, where like, obviously he's like Punisher, and he's having the back and forth on the roof where he you got has this Daredevil TikTok? tied up. Yeah, I got yeah me too. <laughs> yeah, and I watched the full thing. I was like, fuck, he's, he's so, so good. And then I immediately went to the clip of season two, Walking Dead, where he sees Rick coming in, walking the zombies with- and he um, does the run. Yeah, he does the run. He's like, what is that? What is that? He fucking- <laughs> <laughs> It's amazing, man. He runs, amazing. and he like, he's like, bah, bah. See, people don't walk like that taking a shot to the chest. But like he's so fucking good. Fucking putting he's, Herschel in a spot. God, he's putting Herschel, Herschel in his place. And then he's also in this show called um The Premise that's on Hulu. Okay. It was like this uh, anthology is from uh, BJ Novak. Uh, he plays like the main character in episode two. When I tell you, it is one of the best episode episodes of TV I've seen in years. If you ever have the time, you just want to watch one episode of TV because you can't because it's an anthology. Go to I believe episode two of The Premise on Hulu with John Bernthal. Fucking incredible episode. Mm. Mm. You will not regret it. Yeah, he should be back as the Punisher. They need to figure oh that out. Oh, my God. Yeah. They 100%. need to figure that out. We should hang out with him. I would love to hang out with John Bernthal. I mean, we had the moment when Johnny B was out there promoting Ghost Recon. Remember, he brought his dog. But here's the thing is now the strike's going on. He's probably got more free time, right? He's hey, podcasting. He does a podcast. Okay. Real ones. I listen once in a while. I mean, that's you guys. You got to bring him on the kind of funny podcast and get real with Johnny B. Getting real with Johnny B. Okay. I like that. Remember when he brought his dog on the stage? Yeah. He and you yeah. Uh huh. It was Pretty incredible. Cool. Pretty cool. Thought it was well trained. Ghost Recon Breakpoint. Breakpoint. The waste is not, not, as good as waste. <laughs> not as good as waste. Blessing, do me a favor and make eye contact with me. Don't okay. look at the chat. Don't okay. look at him. Just don't look at the chat. Don't look at him. Don't look oh, at I've chat. already seen the spoilers. Yeah. Ten, oh, is, did they, yeah. Yeah, I saw it. Did you see it when? I saw it on chat. So they ruined it for you. They ruined it for Are you guys that fucking dumb? Yeah. I watched episode one of The Bear, and then you're like, bleh. Yeah, Come on, happened. guys. Bleh. And they got mad at me. They do you know how fucking cool that would have been for me if I saw John Bernthal pop up out of nowhere? Johnny B. You ruin it. Eating hot dogs. All right, coming up. Matt S. He plays the bear. <laughs> Matt, Matt S. Right here says, anybody doing Fright Fest at Six, Fla Six Flags Flex. trying to plan out Halloween? Greg Miller, I have asked you many of times. You, me, the crew. Yeah. Very much blessing in Andy because I want to see them get scared. Halloween Horror Nights. There is a Last of Us maze. We must attend. We can talk about it on PlayStation. Wait, is I for love real? you. Uh huh. Is happening? Yeah. Oh, that sounds awesome. I'm in. For real stuff, Halloween is coming. You two are the kings of Halloween. Let's make sure we go see the baddest Halloween Horror Nights. I would love that. Okay. Okay. Just hold throwing on. it out there to the world. Hold on. Chat, trying to make it happen, chat. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. He's holding on. I already now. told you. I, hey, I, I, when I don't like got announced. Yeah. What did I tell you? Oh, I didn't tell you. But what did I do? I texted you did it. Yep. Neil Druckmann. That's crazy. And I said, we, I, we got to go to this. We got to be there. You got to take me to this. Uh -huh. and he said, I'll do it. And then we haven't said anything <laughs> since then. All right. Oh, now we snap. drafted this tweet. Dear Neil. Oh, this text. Dear Neil. Uh -huh. Halloween Horror Nights. We want to go. We want to make content. Drop whatever you're doing. Make it happen. Or else. <sighs> Sick. Oh, he just sent it to you crazy, man. Or else, or you else crazy, like <laughs> man. That's wild. And our final super chat of the day coming from Jose Cortez once again. But not all of us are asshats. He's talking about the Zack Snyder community, just seeing. So you know. Yeah, oh, no, and I'm not asshat But not either. all of us are asshats, LOL. And it's gotten toxic how much hate has been thrown this dude's way. Most people reviewed the Snyder Cut at midnight in the middle of COVID and just trolled for trolling sakes. <sighs> Zack Snyder. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't know. That's Zack. <laughs> I don't even understand. I'm, I'm rereading it to make so, so like what? Is there two parts to this? I mean, I guess the first part. He's just coming in late, but not all of us are asshats. Yeah, yeah. And it's gotten toxic. And it's gotten toxic. 
how much hate is thrown this dude's way. Mm-hmm. Most people, okay, okay, most people reviewed the Snyder Cut at midnight in the middle of COVID and just troll for trolling things. I reviewed the Snyder Cut at midnight. He and did. said it was awesome. We all said it was awesome. It did really well. I remember that. I watched it on my so phone at midnight. I still haven't seen the Snyder Cut. Wow. I saw the you regular Justice League cut after the Snyder Cut was already out. <laughs> It was. Just, I was at my um my nephew's place. We you had to get the regular cut <laughs> after Snyder Cut. Oh yeah, because I, I had never seen the regular cut. I had never seen. Wait, have you sleep. seen the Snyder Cut? No. And so I watched this the regular cut. We can turn it on on the couch. We can it all watch like it together the today. Black and white, like the whole four thing by three, a, four by three. Clint. I'm an like, artist. these kids artist. aren't gonna be able to pay attention to this black and white film. Film might be put it. Yeah, but if you're there for a film, you know what I mean. Maybe you'll you'll be there for it. It was in the living room. I wasn't gonna make. I wasn't gonna suggest. Kind of funny, them best friends. This three. has been your super chat post show with me and your two incredible games daily show hosts. We are far from done. We have so much awesome content coming your way. Like, wait, there's a, a non black and white version <laughs> and a game played through. Of wait, Mass Effect two <laughs> coming up right away with myself and Nick Scarpino. That's right. We're going back into the galaxy to go save the world, and then after that, at two p.m. West Coast, Best Coast time. Barrett debuts another incredible, kind of funny special presentation. We'll all be watching the live premiere. We'll see you then. Goodbye, everyone. Uh, you think Greg's biggest dream is coming? Cool. Yo. What's up, everyone? Welcome back to another fun Phil day of streaming with your boy, Nick Scar. Can I still be called a boy? Yeah. I assume I can. Oh, can I? You the boy. Okay? You a dude. I'd like to be called your man, Nick Scar, you know, at this point. Uh, we are going to continue our Mass Effect 2 playthrough. And fair warning, everyone. We're putting the warning up right now. This is a renegade playthrough. We're not taking no shit from anyone. If there's a space alien out there that wants to tell us the fucking way they think it is... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a space alien.